ABC Sports Game 1, Iowa against UNLV, followed by Seton Hall against Michigan. The duel in the desert is next. This is the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this afternoon, 18,000 fans will jam inside for the first game of our doubleheader as Iowa takes on the University of Nevada at Las Vegas. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger Twybell, and welcome to Las Vegas, and happy holidays. I know around most of the nation, you're in a deep freeze, but I think we've got two games here today that'll help warm you up just a little bit. Iowa and Seton Hall in transition years, both rebuilding. Meanwhile, UNLV and Michigan, people have them tabbed for the final four this year. Now, throughout the afternoon, at halftime and between games, we'll be going to Carol Simpson at ABC News in Washington to keep you updated on the latest developments in Romania and Panama. It's already been a happy holiday for Jerry Tarkanian, and with more on that, let's go down to the men who call the game, Gary Bender and Dick Vitale. Roger, thank you very much. It's Christmas come early for Jerry Tarkanian. David Butler along with Moses Scurry now eligible after being ineligible the first semester due to academics. This team, Dick, was really the pre-census consensus of being the number one team in the country. But now they're the real running Rebels with Butler and Scurry back. Gary, I'll tell you what, Jerry Tarkanian's on cloud nine. Santa Claus came early with the arrival of David Butler and Moses Scurry. I firmly believe now the front court of Vegas is the number one front court in America. Syracuse and Michigan have an awesome front court. But when you talk Butler, Larry Johnson, and Stacey Augman, they are Uno number one. You know, Iowa's been one of the real surprises of the early season. They're 7-0. and Tom Davis really had a big challenge. He lost 64% of his offense to B.J. Armstrong and Ed Horton and Roy Marble. Yet thus far, Dick, they've met that challenge. They've had two really quality wins. When you talk about coming from behind, 17 down against Iowa State. A big rivalry. They come back, they win. Ray Thompson sparkles. He's an outstanding athlete. They have a lot of new players, but they have the Tom Davis system. He knows how to win. I'll tell you one thing. I'm excited. <laughs> the duel in the desert. I can't wait. You are always excited. Game number one, the duel in the desert. We're back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll love your new Oldsmobile. We'll let you return it within 30 days or 1,500 miles if you don't. Who else does that? Unlike some warranties, Oldsmobile's covers just one part. This is the part. Oldsmobile now offers roadside assistance around the clock, even in places where there aren't any clocks. The Oldsmobile Edge, there's nothing else like it. Well, it went okay, I guess. I'm going to catch a 9.15 train. Gee, dinner. Hello? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I, I ate some stuff, and I've got terrible heartburn. Look in your briefcase. Is it there? Ah, the soothing coating action of Pepto-Bismol in handy tablets. The one that coats is the only one you need. Thanks. You're welcome. On BASF videotape, always Christmas will last all year round. BASF, tape that lasts forever. Put a luggage cart and a suitcase and what do you get? Samsonite's piggyback. It's particularly handy on long trips like the one from your car to the ticket counter. <laughs> campfires. This will be over soon. Death and cologne, comfortable, easy to wear. You like campfires? Yeah. Campfires smell great. No, you smell great. Easy <laughs> for you. Know any good ghost stories? Easy to wear. Wendy, that great smelling guy's here. Hard to resist. Hi. See what you started. ABC's College Basketball. 
Brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By Pepto-Bismol, the one that coats is the only one you need. By Nike, who reminds you to just do it. And by Exclamation Cologne. Make a statement without saying a word with Exclamation Cologne by Cody. Welcome back to the Thomas and Max Center. Join me right now is Cheryl Miller, and uh, happy holidays to you. Cheryl, you're going to be down around courtside today. Well, I sure am, and I'll tell you one thing. Las Vegas is showplace America, and the Thomas and Max Center is no different. And in order for the Running Rebels to keep up with this blitzy Las Vegas atmosphere, earlier to, early in the game, they, they had a fantastic light work show. The fireworks spectacular, and this firework production wouldn't be complete without the 14-foot shock. The Sharks, well, I'll tell you one thing, Roger. Many stars have been to Las Vegas and have been through it and everything else. Jerry Tarkini and the Running Rebels continue to be the number one ticket here. Now, is it only a coincidence that you have Iowa colors on right now? It's only a coincidence. Matter of fact, kind of look kind of kind of good in this. That's what I mean. You look great. All right, thank now, you. Now, let's get down for our starting lineups with Gary Bender. Gary? Thank you, Roger, and thank you, Cheryl. And here's the Hawkeyes. And the guy to watch is Ray Thompson, averaging over 21 points. Gibson at seven foot has really come on this year. He's leading the Big Ten in rebounding. UNLV, on the other hand, are they glad to have David Butler back? They were really having problems in the rebounding area. And, of course, Larry Johnson, he's the guy that has been picked as the Junior College Player of the Year last season. What an impact player he is. And the two guys in charge of this game, Dr. Tom Davis in his fourth year, 77 wins in the last three years. That's the most successful three years in Iowa history. And here comes Tark, Jerry Tarkin in his 17th year as the hitman of the running Rebels. He didn't waste any time inserting Butler into the starting lineup. He was given his eligibility clearance Wednesday at 3 o'clock, and 3.01, he had the starting job. Dick Paparo will put the ball up at center court. Sellout crowd here at the Thomas and Mack Center. And Iowa in the black uniforms, and Larry Johnson comes away with it. And three-point attempt by Anderson Huff does not find the mark. And Ray Thompson has a rebound. Here's Brian Gardner. He's starting now in place of Troy Skinner, who has a bad ankle. He gives him outstanding quickness. James Moses, who's not shooting well percentage-wise, but has really the ability to crank it up, averaging over 16 points a game. And backing in is going to be Gardner. It'll be the foul on Brian Gardner. Gardner has a tendency to play a little bit out of control. That's really why he doesn't start as we look at Dr. Tom Davis. I would a win has to reduce the turnover ratio versus the Vegas press because Vegas likes to get a lot of scores out of their press and they have to get to the foul line that's been a tradition of Dr. Tom Davis's clubs go to the foul line and put a lot of points on the board from the foul line in fact they have taken 100 more free throws than their opponents coming into this game no score just underway here and the first of two on the duel in the desert and it comes to Johnson rebound by Gibson the seven footer out of Bull Barrels North Dakota that was an excellent pass by Butler down into Johnson Casey Ogman, who was voted the defensive player of the year last season, coming up with it. Already two turnovers in the ball game against Iowa. They're trying to get a little high-low action from their post people. Larry Johnson so strong inside. Greg Anthony trying one from outside. And Michael Ingram, who's given this team some real toughness, comes up with the rebound. Well, Garner all the way. And tipped by Gibson once, twice, he'll go up again, and he's fouled, and the basket will count. Gibson comes out of North Dakota. He comes from a town that has 600 people. I'll tell you one thing, he's the biggest guy in the community. As we watch him working on the glass, they say he's really improved his boards. You can't teach seven-foot size. Kisses it off the glass, and there's the foul, and he's all pumped up. They believed in this guy, Les Gibson. It took a while to arrive, but his game really coming together. Anthony committed the foul. Chance for a three-point play now for Les Gibson. You mentioned Bull Bells, North Dakota. It's right on the Canadian border. Rebound by Johnson. Vegas likes to really push that ball up the court. Anderson Hunt has missed two from that corner, and it's going to be off of UNLV. Gary, they're 0 for 3 from the perimeter, and I believe they have to make that wing perimeter shot. they got to execute against the 3-2 zone, and we talk about that as the strategy. And they got to score versus the Iowa's press. Iowa likes to utilize a full-court press, and I believe Vegas has to take the ball right through the press and try to get a score. Iowa attacking him. They're coming right after him. They're not afraid of this quickness and this tenacity of 
UNLV. Here is Moses out of Carson, California with a missed shot. Johnson tries to save it, but he was over the end line. Moses came out of high school with a reputation as a tremendous shooter. He has really struggled at Iowa shooting the basketball. He is one of those guys, though, that has no conscience. He just keeps shooting, and the ball he thinks is going to go in the next time. And that's the kind of guy you want to have. Doesn't let each shot be a premium. They're playing him at the three slot and playing it. Thompson in the backcourt. That is off the knee of Johnson, so Iowa will reset. Larry Johnson weighs 250 pounds. He's six foot seven. He's been a dominating player, and I think right now with the arrival of Scurry and Butler, you're going to see his game go to another level, if that's possible. Out of Dallas Skyline High School, then Odessa Junior College, where he was the Junior College Player of the Year. Man-to-man -man pressure defense by UNLV. They put a lot of pressure on the basketball. And that's going to be a charge on Garner trying to duck around a blocking foul correction on the play. And so Iowa on the blocking foul going against Gibson. His first foul. What it really is. What it really was was an illegal screen. Here's the full court press, the 1-2-1-1 one, one, one with the big guy at the baseline. Moses tips it out of bounds. One thing that really keys the press for Iowa was Ray Thompson. He has those long arms and that point on the press defense. They really believe that Thompson's probably the best athlete they've ever had in their pressure defense. He is number 32 for Iowa. Now they fall back in their 1-2-2 two, two zone. Some call it a 3-2 zone. They're going to make Vegas have to hit the perimeter shot. The wing shots are going to be wide open. This is a streaky shooting team. It's wide open. See what I mean? He's got, he's got the wide open shot. Into Johnson, and he has the ball stripped. Here come the Hawkeyes. Moses can't control it. Stacy Ogman's got it. And Ingram pulls it down, and still the Rebels are not on the scoreboard. Thompson, that's kicked out of bounds, or kicked by Hunt. And so Iowa now will reset it, and the Rebels still looking to score, and Jerry Tarkanian feels every moment, every agonizing second thus far. I really believe they're so intense to want to really perform well at home with their people in a lineup in Butler and Scurry that they're really not playing well. Now watch the wide open wing jump shot. I mean, right now, I'd shoot the rock there. Look at him. He's wide open. Shoot the baby. Well, he missed two from there, and so they made him a little tentative. 2-0, it comes into Gibson. Gibson, little jump hook. Rebound by Johnson. He's a man, he's a Windex man. Cleats the glass. Greg Anthony takes it all the way and it still won't go for the Rebels. And Gibson yet with another defensive board. 2-0 in favor of Iowa. Ray Thompson, three-pointer. He's had a sensational first seven games. He has played so brilliantly for Iowa. That is going to be touched last by Iowa. Thompson averaging over 21 points. You know, there's never been a sophomore in Iowa history average 20 points a game. He also averaged 11.5 last year and then was declared academically ineligible and that hurt them down the stretch. Look at the wide open wing shots. Nice spin move and after that follow tip, they're going to wave it off. Offensive interference. I'll tell you one thing. You're looking at two teams that really jack it up and play with great intensity. As we look at Dr. Tom Davis, his clubs always play very hard and so does Jerry Tartani. They played so hard in beating North Carolina at home. Going on the road to beat Iowa State in Ames after trailing by more than 20. Substitutions now coming into the ball game for both clubs. That's Travis Bice, number 13. He's on the floor for one reason. He's an excellent perimeter shooter. And with the kind of strength they have on the interior, the wing people are going to get wide open. There's a foul on Butler. Boy, they ran him through the picket line that time, and Gibson took a pretty good check as he was setting up the block. And Skinner is fouled, and Iowa inbounds on the far side. Jay Webb, number 42, a freshman out of San Jose, is in the game. They think he's going to be really a good one. He's a strong power player. In high school, he was a dominant force down in the box. Number 42, Jay Webb. Iowa with a 5 to nothing lead. We've almost played four minutes, and UNLV still looking to get on the scoreboard. Iowa likes to run that passing game, swing it side to side, and have two guys on the boxes exchange down inside. Thompson driving in, gets it out to Skinner. Skinner's really been struggling in his shooting. Wade Luckenville is also in. Deflection comes off to UNLV. Travis Bison, the three-point shooter, doesn't get it, and they still can't find the hole. 
We talked about our strategy, Gary. Number one, they must hit that wing jump shot to open it up for Butler and Johnson. The Rebels are 0 for 8 from the field. Thompson trying to duck in, and Weiss comes up with a steal. Give it up. Two on one. Get it back. Anthony will take it to the hole, and they still can't get the scoring column broken. Not a good play by Anthony. Should have given it up with a little bounce pass. Boy, a torrid pace back and forth into Jepson. Follow tip. Webb saves it off to Thompson. It's really fast and furious, and now Thompson with a charge. Excellent call. No question about it. He hooked them with his left arm on that drive to the goal. You know what I'm impressed with? The kids from Iowa are not intimidated at all here with this environment, and this could intimidate you. They're going right at him. We'll be back. Yo! This is Mars Blackman, and this is my main man, Michael Jordan. And this is a pair of tight Air Jordan from Nike. This is something you can buy. And this is a patented, vicious, high prime 360 slam dunk. This is something you cannot do. Let me repeat myself. This you can buy. You cannot do this. Can, can, can. No! Volcano erupts in South Carolina classroom. Now let's go inside. IBM is helping teachers teach and bring subjects to life with courseware that helps children learn English, math, science, and more. Looks hot, but it's cold. Courseware that complements a teacher's curriculum from kindergarten through high school. Hi, very good. The avalanche hits Florida Elementary School. This is really something, you know. You should stick around for the moonwalk. Hmm? Yeah? Yeah. You want a deal? Well, here comes the deal. Now get low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just another deal. It's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers on all other models. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. This deal's a deal on a new generation. Oldsmobile. Runner-up Seton Hall is out for revenge against the team that took the national crown, the Michigan Wolverines. Coming up next as ABC's college basketball continues. Gary, watch right. Uh-oh, we had a little problem here with our... We had a little breakdown. Right here, we're going to take a look how Anderson Hunt is going to be wide open on the wing against the defense. They bring him in. They're packing it in. Now look at number 12. He's not even looking at the basket. Not in reverse and dump it in. And right now, he's got to shoot that wide open shot. Our telestrator went boo-boo on me. I don't know what happened. I drew the thing, Gary. That's a turnover on this baby. It must be Las Vegas, Dick. Give a turnover to the telestrator. He didn't want to draw. 15-16 to go in this first half. And still, the battle Las Vegas has not scored. They are 0 for 9 for the field. And that's going to be a foul on Moses. James Moses, who in high school averaged over 34 points a game, the school's all-time leading scorer in Carson. Coming into this game, averaging 16, as now on the far side, UNLV will inbound. They're really going to have to make that perimeter shot. Defenses are just going to pack it in. If UNLV has one negative, look at Iowa rebound at 12 to 4. It doesn't shock you, Gary. Year in and year out, they're right up there in the tops of the nation. Led the nation in rebound margin last year, and two years ago they led the nation in rebound margin, Iowa. Two of three, and they're plus 11 coming into this game. That foul, by the way, going on Jay Webb as Butler tried to duck inside. I really believe when you look at UNLV, the one area that I think that they've been a little inconsistent on, really going to have to improve to make a strong run for a national championship is backcourt play. And Anthony and Hunt have to have more consistency to their game. Here is Butler, of course, ineligible that first semester. Boy, are they glad to have him back. Two years ago, he was the junior college player of the year out of San Jacinto in Texas. And, of course, this year, Larry Johnson joining the team. Well, when he was a freshman there, they were 37-1 on the run arrow as he gets his first point. Played with Moses Scurry, Drew Harvey, Michael Porter. They had a sensational team. The year before that, he wasn't there. Harvey and Porter's team won the National Junior College Championship. That's off for Moses. 
So UNLV at the 15.04 mark finally got on the scoreboard with Butler hitting the free throw. Eight turnovers now against Iowa. But the one thing I was very fortunate, UNLV's not turning the turnover into a score. Here's Anthony. He's not a true point guard. He's really had to work hard at trying to learn that position. The steal is made by Brian Garner. He's trying to jam the ball inside, forcing the pass. And he picks up the foul from Anthony. Garner really gives this team speed. He comes out of the Milwaukee area. He was the Wisconsin High School Player of the Year his senior year. And Anthony picking up his second foul, trying to stay with this guy. Garner is one of those guys who's really protected the ball well, too. He's only committed one turnover in the last four games. As substitution now, coming into the ball game is going to be Brick Tubbs, a sophomore out of DeWitt, Iowa, as you see Jay Webb setting down. Tom Davis likes to utilize his bench, tries to get all the players involved. Tom Davis copying the substitution pattern of Dean Smith from North Carolina. He'll have 40 to 45 substitutions a game. Here's Travis Bison. They finally hit one from outside. That's the two-pointer. That's why he's on the floor, Gary. He's a specialist. Turnover going against Iowa as they try to hurry it up. This is really an intimida intimidating environment. The fans really get behind him. The Gucci crowd got out of here real early this morning. 10.30 tip off down here on the West Coast. Do you have your Gucci's on? No, Cheryl Miller does, though. <laughs> Stacy Sianovich was the guy who produced that turnover for UNLV, and Ogman now will bring it in. Sianovich, number five, into the ball game. He's their third guard. There he is with the ball. There's the zone defense. They're going to pack it in, but they got to recognize this guy. He can shoot it. Doesn't get that one. Ogman inside. Nice touch pass to Butler, and Butler just can't find it. Tries again. He gives him an extra dimension along that baseline. David Butler, great size and super quickness. So five unanswered points has tied it up after that long drought. And inside we have a foul called as a collision underneath between Garner and Butler. Garner really has superb quickness also. Skinner gives him a little bit more poise at that point guard position. Garner gives him the athletic ability. Gibson will come back in. Now, all game long, you're going to see people going back and forth. A foul on Garner, by the way, was his second as he collided with Butler inside. Hartman. Uh-oh. Showtime. Uh-oh. Get up the lights. Get up the party. It's showtime. Stacey Hartman. Mr. Rambo. And for the first time, UNLV has uh -oh. the lead. There's Larry Johnson. He'll not catch up with that, but good heads-up defense. They really live off their defense. Jerry Tartanian is a masterful teacher of the man-to-man -man pressure defense. Stacey Ogman with the great catch. He looks like a flanker back. Up, up, and away from out of California. And they love Stacey down in Vegas country. At Muir High School in Pasadena. He was the Big West player of the year last season. Watch how Iowa really tries to post up on those boxes and exchange down on the, we call it horizontal screens and vertical screens. You just saw Moses run a horizontal. They're going to try to post them on a box against Vice. Thompson trying to shake loose and does. He's so smooth. He's out of Argo, Illinois. He has five points in the game, ties it up at seven. Three-point attempt by Austin. Not normally a good perimeter shooter, but he's been an approved shooter. All of a sudden now, after that long dry spell, UNLV has started to hit stride and play very well. I think the basket by Vice was really big. Secondary break of Iowa, they try to flash Moses on that box. Boy, top defense by Ogden produces a turnover. That's the reason he was the defensive player of the year. Outstanding defensive player, but I'll tell you what, if he expects to get that award this year, this guy right here, Tom Davis, is in a conference where there's a great defensive guard by the name of Steve Bartle. 12 turnovers for Iowa. We talked about that being a key in the game. I like Bartle defensively down in Illinois. He and Gill give Lou Henson the best backcourt in America. There's that 3-2 zone. They live off it. Moses at the point. Anderson Hart, who missed early now, a little hesitant to track anything from outside. Sianovich will try one. 
I tell you what, I want to jump out there and put a uniform on for UNLV. I could shoot that rock. The way they're playing defense, they are just packing it in, giving you wide open J's. I know Roger Weibel and Kim Belton would like to jump out there yeah. and shoot it because I've seen them shoot the ball. I'd like to see you run up and down the floor with these guys. Well, I, I didn't say I was going to oh, do that okay. now. All right. Larry Johnson committed foul a moment ago. Let's get realistic here. 10-7 oh, so in favor of the Rebels. Oh, that's that's that that Thompson. That's the horizontal screen, and that's the cut across the lane I was talking about. Thompson slashes to the box. They enter it. That's a trademark of the Tom Davis team. Thompson, seven points. There's a traveling call against the Ottomans. Iowa will get it at the 11.57 mark. So we're going to take a break. After a slow start, UNLV now has taken a one-point lead. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll love your new Oldsmobile. We'll let you return it within 30 days or 1,500 miles if you don't. Who else does that? Unlike some warranties, Oldsmobile's covers just one part. This is the part. Oldsmobile now offers roadside assistance around the clock, even in places where there aren't any clocks. The Oldsmobile Edge, there's nothing else like it. So that's Joey's sister. Is she a college senior? No, she's going to be a freshman. She joined the military under a lot, and now they're paying for education with the GI Bill. The GI Bill? You know what makes you want to sign up? I did, and so did Joey. Part-time, full-time in the U.S. Armed Forces. Got a cold? Gotta get Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. It works. It's fast. Alka-Seltzer Plus. The fizz works fast. Christmas bowl game tradition. Top college seniors meet in a stellar showcase of talent. The Kelly Tire Blue Gray All Star Football Classic. Christmas Day on ABC Sports. The running Rebels with a one point lead is the 11.57 mark. This is the first duel of this duel in the desert. Next, a rematch of the NCAA championship game from Seattle. Seton Hall against Michigan. Different Seton Hall team. Michigan with four starters back from that team. Michigan really has a look at Rudy Washington right there, the assistant coach. He does a great job at Iowa, and he's also right now the president of the Black Coaches Association. Has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, but he's in charge of rebounding. And the last three years, Iowa's been superb in rebounding. Two of the last three that led the nation. That rebound ball. margin, Gary. That ball was kicked. They'll reset the shot clock. And look at this. They're leading in rebounding's as you speak. They but really work on getting good position. So Iowa has jumped to a 5 to nothing lead, now trailing 10-9. Boy, they extend their defense, don't they? They come out almost, pick you up on the center court line. Well, they really pressure on the ball, try to front on the boxes. And I pass this side to side. A.C. Earl, freshman out of Moline, Illinois, in desperation, tries to pass to Jepson, who hits the deck hard. It'll be off of Iowa. Boy, he really got hit hard that time, but he seems to be all right. The Hawkeyes are really struggling against the pressure defense of UNLV right now. They can't seem to get into their offensive set. Butler was in trouble. Somehow got it off to Sianovic. This is a kid that could be outstanding or be just very average. Right here, he's a kid. Three pointer, and now we're getting back on track. He's from out of Southwestern High School in Detroit. In fact, his high school coach is here today, Perry Watson, where he's got an amazing record as a high school coach. Well, he hit the shot that eliminated Arizona last year. The top ranked team in NCAA play. There's a five second count. And again, good defense by UNLV, the 13th turnover against Iowa. He's going to take A.C. Earl out of the game. He's a shot blocker, but really struggling. There's North Carolina with a big W. They seem to be getting it together. Four losses, Dean has a team with a 16-point win over Kansas State. Coming in now for the first time this season is Moses Scurry. He, along with Butler, and eligible in the first semester. He's number 35, and he is a tenacious rebounder. 6-7 out of Brooklyn. From the right-hand corner, Hunt trying to make another one count, and nice follow by Ogden. 
Look at the battle going on by Larry Johnson and Jeff Tennis off of Gibson. The reason the fans like Scurry, watch his emotion on the floor. It becomes very contagious. He's a very emotional player. He said, can I please say hello to his mom in Brooklyn? I said, I can't do that. I'm not allowed to do that. Am I allowed to say hello to his mom for the holidays? Dick, I think you just did. Oh, I did? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, Moses, I think you are. <laughs> now the Eli Whitney High School in Brooklyn. 13-9 in favor of the Rebels. Skip pass against the zone, and Anthony able to penetrate and get the shot to go. He's a transfer, excelled when he played at University of Portland. He's from Vegas. Jerry didn't recruit him initially. Came here as a transfer. He's got a lot of talent. Roy Skinner playing with a bad ankle. He heard about a week ago in practice. He's been the starter prior to today. Watch the technique defensively of Anderson Hunt when he plays the ball. He has probably the best defensive technique of any guard I've really seen playing the ball head-to-head. -head. Boy, Johnson got away with something there. He inadvertently hit Gibson across the face, and Gibson lost control. Watch it here now. Johnson comes across his face, and boom! He hit Ziff, got away with it. Back door, and they're going to wave it off. Dick Paparo says instead a foul on Moses Scurry. There's a look at Tom Davis. He started out coaching. Lafayette, he's been all over Boston College, Stanford, and now at Iowa, where he's had three phenomenal years. There he is talking to Dick Preparo. Coming up at halftime, what to do with all the money that's now been negotiated in the NCAA basketball package. Seton Hall, Michigan, revisited. And ABC News, of course, with all the world news that's unfolding, we'll keep you posted on what's happening in Panama as well as Romania. Ray Thompson, that's goaltending. Ray Thompson is really impressive. There's no doubt about the goaltending as he catches the ball on its downward flight as opposed to beating it going on its upward arc. That was Scurry who got up there. I like Thompson. Look at him right here. Those long arms, number 32. Played in the shadows last year. Marble, Armstrong, and Horton. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! That's a flying trapezac, baby! That's acrobatic! That's awesome! Larry Johnson! Whoa! that impressive? Oh, baby! His first two points, and he made a statement there. Big exclamation point. Six-point lead. Troy Skinner just threw that one up. He was off balance. Didn't look like he knew what he wanted to do. That's going to go off the UNLV. Let's look at the breakaway by Larry Johnson. Watch right now to catch the trailer. He goes down to gutty to defense from out of Odessa Junior College, out of Dallas, Texas. The slam cam, take a look up there. You're allowed to grab the rim this year to protect yourself. In the past, you could only grab it last year if you were being fouled in an attempt taking the ball to the goal. Barry Young is now in the game for UNLV, and he bats that ball down on the end line. Look at this, after the slow start now, the Rebels got it going. Gibson having all kinds of trouble inside, tries to back in, and he's called for the charge. Second foul on the seventh footer, and that's the 17 foul now against Iowa. He made one major mistake that a lot of big people make. He brought the ball down from seven foot. He made himself into a five foot player by bringing the ball down to the floor. Greg Anthony out of the Las Vegas area, played one year at the University of Portland. There's that zone now to playing Thompson at the point with his long arms. There he is. Three point attempt, and pushing off inside is going to be Scurry again. So Scurry, the inactivity may be hurting some of his timing on the boards. This guy's not a quitter. Look at him battle. Look at his face. The calm, cool Dr. Tom Davis. Look at that intensity. You know what he's upset about? He really feels they're not catching a lot of that pushing off of the defensive boards. Well, he feels, he told us last night, is that UNLV plays great pressure defensively, but if you let him get away with a little bump and a little grab and a little push, and you don't blow the whistle, now it becomes superb. Boy, body's hitting the floor as Gardner tries to get it. Jay Webb with the rebound. Johnson there defensively, but Webb has good position. They think he's going to be special. They think he's got great potential from out of San Diego. Very young, and he's fouled by Webb. Interesting story about Webb as we look at him. His mom last year, Mrs. Webb, when he was being recruited, she was getting all confused about all the rules and regulations. And what she did, she formed and made her own booklet. She made a booklet, a 60-page booklet, about recruiting. Now look at Jepson right here. He's seven feet. Now he brings the ball all the way down. He becomes a five-footer. See this? Now right now. Oh, there's the hook. Very young, hits the free throw. He's a junior out of the Maryland area. 
good shooter, and he's the kind of guy, though, that doesn't really play very good defense, and so Tark will kind of spot him in the game. Well, he's really important to this club because, as you say, he can shoot the basketball, and with the presence of their big people, the shooters become very essential to open up good angles for their players inside. The Rebels with a 19-13 lead. Here is Webb and the tenacious defense of UNLV. Ingram has come back in. Johnson reaches in on him. Johnson's like a warrior out there. Anthony has it. He gets it up the floor. Curry to Johnson, and he's fouled, and he takes a pretty good shot from Garner. That is his third foul. Boy, Tom Davis, I've seen him into a game, but I don't think I've seen him quite as angry as I see him today. He really does a great coaching job, especially when there isn't a whole lot of expectations. Last year, people projected Iowa to be like number one in the nation in some polls. Well, there was some magazine I read, the uh -oh. Dick Vitale uh -oh. magazine, that predicted only eight wins. Now, if they win today, you're in real trouble. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Gary. You're bringing that up because all these Iowa fans are getting on me <laughs> yesterday at the Mirage. But what they don't understand, and I have to send a message out to all the Iowa people, they got to read. And if you read in the magazine, in the front of it, it says these are not all the opinions of Dick Vitale, but the respective writers. The writer that did that covers the Big Ten. Uh, now, so I'm taking a, a cop out. I don't, I don't take that explanation at all. <laughs> it's the truth, though. <laughs> Only the truth. I stand by it. Johnson gets both of them. 21-13 in favor of UNLV. 8-17 to go in the first half. Four points for Johnson. They really extend on it forwards. They try to deny. They make it so difficult for you to initiate your offense. A.C. Earl, who leads the Big Ten and blocks shots way out from the basket, gets it off to Thompson. Thompson, nice spin move, and he overpassed that one. Very young. Uh -oh, uh -oh. There goes Mr. Johnson. Oh, 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 you can see that baby coming. Little Dipsy do dunk the roof. Larry Johnson, a man playing with boys. popular demand, we proudly introduced the Nikon Teletouch 300, a totally automatic dual-lens camera that significantly reduces red-eye. You want a deal? Well, here comes the deal. Now get low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just another deal. It's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers on all other models. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. Award-winning linebacker Percy Snow leads Michigan State against Hawaii in the Eagle Aloha Bowl, Christmas Day on ABC Sports. UNLV on a 23-8 run now, jumped to their biggest lead of the game. Let's go to Cheryl Miller. Thank you much, Gary. Uh, with me is Jim Strong, who was the, with the University of Notre Dame coordinator now he's the head football coach here at UNLV and coach it must have been a tough decision to make well it was a tough decision I got an opportunity to be a head football coach in Las Vegas a great city and a place to build an outstanding football program what would you like to bring from Notre Dame to UNLV oh I'd probably like to bring about half those football players out there I think that helped the program in a hurry but uh, I think the biggest thing is just the credibility in Notre Dame and the way they develop the football program and the tradition that they've had over the years I think that I've learned a lot about building a football program from, from the ground level up. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Let's go back to you. Jim Strong, by the way, played for Gene Cady at Hutchinson Junior College. I'll tell you one thing, just meeting him, he's very impressive, and Lou Holt says he's a dynamite recruiter, and all the people at Vegas are excited to have the Fighting Irish assistant. 
Ten-point lead for UNLV. Thompson, who has nine of the 13 points for Iowa, misses from outside. Here's where they got to complete the play. they got to convert and transition. Uh, still a little Kennedy, didn't he? He's not really getting the good rotation in that follow-through. He's a much better shooter than what he's doing out here today. He has that wrapped hand. He hurt it against Oklahoma. Troy Skinner trying to get away from Hunt, and Hunt commits the foul. Well, I'll tell you, Dr. Tom Davis really livid. He thought it should have been blown a little bit earlier. The tenacity, the tenacity of Hunt trying to really deny the basketball. Look at him right now, number 12. He misses the shot, but look at him working defensively. He doesn't want him to touch the ball. That's ball you man denial, but he bumps him. He definitely fouls him. You know what? I wouldn't mind a player getting a foul like that if I were coaching. Well, that's hustle, scrappiness, and tenacity. He makes it difficult, and Skinner go the line, and Skinner is struggling from every part of his shooting game as one out of the ball game now will be Hunt. The one and one, that's seventh team foul now against the Rebels. Here's Skinner. He's got good touch, but he's not shooting well. He's well, not there, and a foul now is going to go against Moses as he tries to follow up. And if you watch Skinner shoot in practice, he's got the excellent touch, the excellent rotation, but yet during the game he is really struggling shooting the basketball it's become a mental thing for him he averaged almost 37 points a game at Palmer Iowa he was a runner-up to Wade Lookinville as the player of the year in the state of Iowa Lookinville such an aggressive player he gives you all the intangibles so Butler at the line Butler 6'10", a 200-pounder. He played at Coolidge High School in Washington, D.C., and last year only shot 61% from the free throw line. You know, you talk about the Big West, and that's where UNLV plays, and I really feel they'll dominate the conference again, but Long Beach State's doing a great job under Joey Harrington. They beat a really good Texas basketball team. They've given Purdue their only loss. Gene Katie has only one loss, and it was to, to uh, Long Beach State, so Joey Harrington's building up that program. Now the lead at 12 after the two free throws. A.C. Earl tries to follow and Butler it's all over boy he brings that down with authority and throws it away not a good play by Butler a little hot dog a little mustard a little Hollywood and look at Clarks it's no David but you know what I'd rather have David on the oh, sideline yeah. I've been playing what is taking 30 seconds getting back in the starting lineup maybe 10 25-13 in favor of the running Rebel there's that passing game we swing it side to side trying to get the ball down to the boxes but there's no Horton and there's no Marble. Three-pointer by Moses. That's what he has to give him. He has to give him that jump shot. That's what he came to score with a great reputation as a shooter. Travis Bice back in the game. He'll kick it out to Butler. That's a skip pass they like to use against the zone. And Barry Young doesn't get it. Butler over the back, kept it alive. And then A.C. Earl fouls Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson's going to get a lot more offensive rebounds with the presence of David Butler on the floor. And right now with Bison, Young on the floor, two guys that can shoot the ball. Look at this two platooning, bringing a whole club in. <laughs> a wave of substitutes come in, and that's very characteristic of Tom Davis. Did it at Boston College. He did it at Stanford. A game earlier this year, he made 40 substitutions. That was against Iowa State. Says I don't keep track of it, but... It's in that neighborhood, that figure, most every game. Well, it keeps the players involved in a practice session as well. Psychologically, it's a great move. If you scholarship athlete, he's got to have some ability, so why not utilize him during the course of a game? And at least if a kid knows mentally that he may go into the game, he stays into the game on the sideline as he's observing. 11-point lead now for UNLV. Skinner doing a pretty good job handling the ball, gets it off to Webb, and Webb blocked by Butler. Butler gives him that ball. Shot blocking ability, and then here it is, up, up, away. He's Yalkin, created by the block shot. The Celtics for years started in a red back era with Bill Russell, key in the running game. The block shot, and off they went with Kuzi and Charmin and Jones. Here's Webb at the other end. They got to play him a lot more. I like that guy. He's got good mobility, good touch inside, very strong. They were going to redshirt him, then Matt Bullard got hurt, so they had a play. And there's a nice spin move. Now Stacy Ockman starting to get hot. Stacy said, "Don't forget me. I can play too." I tell you what, they got some horses with Johnson, Ockman, and Butler. Ingram tried to pass it inside, hit the backboard. Here they come. Anthony out to Bice, sets up the three. Webb brings it down. Bice getting a great opportunity right now to get a lot of PT playing time. Jerry's searching for a perimeter shooter. Skinner to Luckinville and Luckinville. Sucking inside. That will be his first foul. 
There comes Mr. Butler over. Right now he's gonna rotate defensively. And there we're gonna see the block shot. And the block shot now is gonna create the fast break opportunity. There's the transition game. If you're a running basketball team, Gary, you want to convert at least 60% of your fast break opportunities. Vegas early in this game was not converting in their fast break situation, but they're a lot better right now. A new man in the lineup now for Iowa. It's Dale Reed, number three. He was Mr. Basketball in Wyoming. They want to start playing him a little more, get his outside shooting ability in. Scored a lot of points on a high school level. Has not had a whole lot of playing time because of Gardner and because of Skinner. Reed is number three. 31-18 in favor of the Rebels. 4-37 the first half, and Bice from three. Travis Bice says, I like this lineup. See, a guy like Bice becomes important, just like Matt Rowe was when he played for Syracuse, now transferred to Maryland. Shoot the basketball, give him that perimeter shot. That's a role. You need role players. Can't have all stars. Suffocating defense by UNLV, and they have the ball again. Bice, he wants it, doesn't he? He's making us look good, Gary. When he came in, we said he was a specialist. He was a shooter. And I'll tell you what, he's not letting down. 152 pounds, he's not very big, but he's got a big shot. There's Webb, right now Iowa is uh -oh. in trouble. Johnson out of the break, watch out! Johnson, nice lead. Watch out! The running Rebels! You better get a little T.O. Tom Davis! This is the reason they call him the running uh -oh. Rebel. They can run. They can run, they play defense, and I believe they will be the best team in America with this current group. Take a break. Iowa trying to regroup. They say, come on down, Kansas. Come on down, Kansas. Folks who use Tartar Control Crest have a few things to say about their cleanings. Wonderful. Great. Marvelous. That's it. Okay. You should care Beautiful. for me. Because dental cleanings are easier with Tartar Control Crest. That's amazing. Yeah. Paradise. Woo! What I love to see. So use the toothpaste more dentists recommend. Wonderful. It's wonderful. Tartar Control Crest, the dentist's choice, is hard on tartar and easy on you. All right. <laughs> When two of L.A.'s top rival cops... You know me, huh? Yeah, I hear you're the second best cop in L.A. It's funny, I hear the same things as you. ...go gunning for trouble. They drive each other crazy. Tango and Cash. Rated R. Now playing. When you have these, why would you need a Black & Decker Power Ratchet? Because it's faster, easier, and works in lots of places. Manual wrenches can't. The Black & Decker Power Ratchet. It's really turning a lot of heads. Say, where'd you learn to dunk? In finishing school? Oh, now, don't you start telling me I shouldn't dunk. Of course you shouldn't. You don't know how to do it. Dunking's an art. Yeah. It's all a matter of talking. Oh, I'll write a book about it. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. ABC's College Basketball. Brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future, now at your Oldsmobile dealer. And by General Motors, where the deals are hot during GM's hot December. UNLV got a very slow start, missing their first nine shots. They trailed five to nothing since have outscored Iowa 39 to 13. And Dick, the obvious question, how good is this UNLV team? Well, you know, Bice can shoot the perimeter shot, but I think what they're really lacking to be a great, great basketball team is a Danny Tartanian or a Mark Wade, a distributor, a passer. Remember when those two played the point? They really got the ball to key people at the right time. Do you like the drive? Paparo calls it good and go to the line. 
Nick Caparo indicating Bice committed the foul. A basket counting. That's Bice's first personal. I think you made a good point earlier. Greg Anthony has tried to make that adjustment, and he was a second guard. I think the, the same problem exists up in Syracuse. I think they got all the ingredients, great athletes. They really know how to run. Jimmy Beheim gives them good flexibility. But I'm not convinced that an adjustment from a number three man like a Steve Thompson to the point could really make that happen to win the national championship. Iowa with 20 turnovers. That was one of our strategies up on top. And I love Syracuse. Don't get me wrong. I really do. I love their athletes. But I still think it's a tough, tough job for a kid to make that kind of adjustment from a wing forward to a point forward. Gibson was able to deflect the inbounds pass, but then the shot missing. And so UNLV will reset it again. 3.16 to go in the first half. Don't forget, Michigan, Seton Hall. Second game of the duel in the desert will follow this with us. And that's over and back. They're going to give it back to Iowa now. As they tried inbounds, he caught it out of bounds. And now Iowa trying to come back with their defense. I think Iowa's going to have a very tough time finishing in the first division in the Big Ten. When you look at Michigan, Illinois, you look at Indiana with their great young talent, and it's very young. I saw Minnesota the other day, very impressed with Melvin Newburn and Willie Burton. Michigan State has really improved, and I think Ohio State and Purdue. So I really believe it's going to be very tough for Iowa to finish in the first division because of the toughness of that conference. They'll be tough at home. They're 6-0 thus far at home. That's a great environment, too. The fans, really, it's a beautiful event. Moses. Moses trying somehow to get the offense going. Nice that time by Gibson. Just a tenacity that time got him the bucket. Well, he's a little bit more active than he was last year. He's playing with a lot more confidence. And he wants a shot in the NBA. When you're seven foot tall, just think about Brad Lowhouse. Now playing with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Stacy on beautiful pull-out jumper. Well, he knows his range. Doesn't have great, great range. Playing very confident. Knocked out of bounds by Vice. Substitution now. Coming back in will be David Butler. Let's take a break now and go to Roger Twybel. Roger? <laughs> Having a little problem there at the microphone. We'll check back with Roger. He'll be with us at halftime to take us through the halftime here at Thomason Mack Center. What a beautiful facility this is as it's been the home of the running Rebels now. This is the seventh year. 17th year that Jerry Tarkany has been here. As we've got Iowa trying to get into their offensive set. Reed getting some playing time. Nice pass to Thompson, and Thompson is able to complete the play. I'll tell you what, that kid is going to be an all-Big Ten performer. He really is an outstanding baseline performer. He can play on a perimeter. And he has 11 points of the game. 41-25. The Rebels. Here's David Butler. Moses trying to track it down. Here comes Stacy the other way. Butler slides in, follows, and Butler just can't get the ball to go in for him. If you talk about effort, Good boy, second. he's glad to be back. Good it? second and third effort. Played for two years at Coolidge High School in Washington, D.C. But he has really helped not only the team collectively, but he's helped Stacy Ogman because Ogman's having to play the pivot some, and that's not his spot, and now can move out to that forward position. Well, Larry Johnson said, boy, am I happy Big David's back. Make your pick there, both Tubbs, along with Gibson committing the foul, and they're going to uh, give it to Tubbs. Butler to the line. Butler is fearless. And talking to Tarkanian yesterday, he said, if there's one thing I love about him, it's his toughness and his just fearless ability to just not be denied at any phase of his game. Well, they're really looking forward in the recruiting process to try and replace this guy. And they're hoping they get a guy by the name of Ed O'Bannon from out of Lakewood, California. Artesia High School, probably one of the best, as we look at Jerry Tarkanian, one of the best big kids still available at 6'8". And he's made his cut list. He's got it down to Syracuse, Southern Cal. He's got UCLA and Arizona State, Bill Frieda. And we're going to have a feature on Bill Frieda. Hey, I got something about Frieda. Tell me this isn't true, Bill Frieda. Tell me it's not true that after a game you said, let me tell you, gang, I am really excited about San Francisco, Seattle, and L.A. And the hell with Champagne and Lafayette and Bloomington. Those are horse manure pants. I can't believe that Frieda said that. Did he say that? He didn't use that one word. Did yeah, he? it did. I read it in the paper. Did I can't really? believe it. All right. All right. 
right, we're going to have a break now. Let's go up and see if we can get Roger. Roger, you up there? Yeah, I sure am, Gary. And uh, I want to just tell you what's coming up at halftime here at the Thomas and Mack Center. We'll be talking to Steve Fisher and P.J. Carlissimo, the coaches from Michigan and Seton Hall, about how their past summer has been after that national championship game. And also Cheryl Miller will have a feature on the big money that the NCAA will receive from CBS, a billion dollars for seven years. And, of course, we'll be checking in with Carol Simpson in Washington, ABC News, for the latest in Panama and Romania. Thank you, Roger. We had a technical foul reaching in that time against UNLV, and so Moses with a two-shot technical foul. They should have called the technical on Frida. I mean, I can't believe he made those statements. I, I think he might have been joking. I just can't believe he would say that. It was a great college town. Great college town. <laughs> Well, he likes that weather out there in the Valley of the Sun in Phoenix. Maybe he just had one of those moments when he didn't think it through. Well, he won his first game. They had beaten San Francisco, and I guess maybe he got a little excited, but uh, that's got to be the dumbest quote of the year. Look at the pressure now being applied by Hot Five. Seven count on Dale Reed. Nick Papara right in front of us making that call. Tom Davis, if he has to be upset with one thing so far today, is the execution offensively. Well, I tell you, UNLV is just taking them out of it, though. Their defense has just absolutely stopped what Iowa wanted to do. The kids are so excited to have Scurry and Butler back that they've picked it up a notch. Butler with that pull-up. It's really nice when Santa Claus brings a coach, a 6'10 player, who's active, who's quick. And so quick. Arcadian says he's never had a quicker center. 45-27. Iowa is just battling to keep their poise right now. Moses from outside. Gibson follows. Comes down with it again. He's working hard. I'll yes, tell you is, And he gets it. He is really working hard on the inside. And when you're that big, you're going to get a chance to play in the NBA. Tom Davis believed in it. Les Gibson, and he certainly proved to be everything he hoped he would be, and he's getting better every week. He's the last player of the George Ravlin era at Iowa. There's that steal. That reminds you of a Brad Lojas move. Remember, he used to do that. Here's Thompson, been very quiet, three-pointer. Sianovic comes down to the rebound. Three on one. Reed is back. Osman will complete it. Yeah, really doing a great job converting. This is an impressive display of basketball. UNLV, preseason, the consensus number one pick, had lost two games to Big 18, Kansas and Oklahoma, and now with Butler and Scurry back, look out. And we're looking at a team, Iowa, that has some impressive wins. I mean, they beat North Carolina by 13, and they also, and they also came from, like you said, 20 down against a good Iowa State team. In Buffalo beating the Jets, I thought Dick Steinberg's presence would get everybody up a notch. Well, he can't block and tackle. Time out called now by UNLV. They were having trouble getting the ball in bounds, and Jerry Tarkanian's team with 20 seconds, and with a 47-29 lead. Find the Leafs is a minivan for kids with parents. And let's face it, we all have them. Yeah. It's the all-new Oldsmobile silhouette. Talking radical concept here. Your own window seat. Room for lots of things. And neat stuff to keep your parents from bugging you on long trips. Besides, silhouette makes them look cool. Right. Yeah. Your father's Oldsmobile. Ready, dude? And they need all the help they can get. Yeah. This is the new generation of Oldsmobile. Financial serenity. It takes confidence. Control. The Travelers has been delivering on this promise of financial peace of mind for 125 years. With carefully controlled investments, with insurance protection you can trust. The Travelers, you're better off under the umbrella. 47-29. The Rebels have stormed this Iowa team after trailing early 5-0. Christmas Day, we have a special present for you, a college football doubleheader, the Kelly Tire Blue-Gray All-Star Football Classic. Last year, Jeff Longeman came out of that game, the number one pick of the Jets, as you were just talking about a while ago. And then over in Hawaii, the Eagle Aloha Bowl, Michigan State. You can see this man, Percy Snow, the outstanding linebacker 
against Hawaii. And then on Monday night, a big game. Minnesota must win. They must win to win the Central Division of the NFC. And Cincinnati right now is red hot. Well, I tell you, Cincinnati didn't take any prisoners against oh. Houston, but he better save some of those points because I just got out of Minneapolis and they are ready. Seven Pro Bowlers they have and six for, hey, I'll tell you, six for uh, Cincinnati. It's 13 Pro Bowlers in that game. I didn't know you even were interested in football. Five Super. seconds left in this first half. Here's Butler trying to take it up, strip to the ball. Rodell Davidson to the game, and the time expires. After it has been an impressive exhibition of basketball for this UNLV team. The running Rebels at the halfway point with a 47-29 lead. Monday. MacGyver is not an assassin. He's framed for murder and stalked by the real killer. I need your help. MacGyver, Monday. Great things come in threes like Oklahoma coaching legend Barry Switzer and renowned Kansas City Chiefs coach Hank Stram and the greatest coach of all time, George Allen. Coach Tuesdays following Roseanne. Excuse me, George. <laughs> Sir, this is one of the few businesses that doesn't advertise in the GTE Everything pages. Why is that? Well, this is Mom's restaurant. And this is Mom. She's a great cook. But if I advertised in the book people actually use, this place would be packed. I don't think either one of us wants that on our conscience. Do we? Businesses that want to be successful advertise in the GTE Everything pages. Those that don't, don't by the real killer. I need your help. MacGyver, Monday. All great things come in threes like Oklahoma coaching legend Barry Switzer and renowned Kansas City Chiefs coach Hank Stram and the greatest coach of all time, George Allen. Coach Tuesdays following Roseanne. Excuse me, George. <laughs> <laughs> Nevada's foundation for growth. Investing over a billion dollars this year. Creating more jobs. Building for the future. Gaming is why Nevadans are among the lowest taxed in America. A lighter burden, a brighter future. Gaming and Nevada. Inseparable. Celebrating a festival of light. Happy Hanukkah from Channel 13. College Basketball Halftime Report. Brought to you by L.A. Gear. Unstoppable in performance fashion footwear. And we're back at the Thomas and Mack Center halftime of our first game of the Duel in the Desert. And Nevada, Las Vegas leads Iowa 47-29. The NCAA is going to receive a billion dollars over seven years from CBS for basketball. A lot of decision on how that money will be spent. Cheryl Miller has a report. One billion dollars, that's what CBS will pay to show the NCAA basketball tournament for seven years. I think my hope would be that we can distribute the dollars in an equitable way in order to nudge reform forward. 
Last year, teams in the tournament received at least $275,000. Those reaching the Final Four earned $1.3 million. Some of that was shared with other teams in their leagues, but still, many feel big money for winning can be dangerous. Well, certainly the, the bigger the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the more temptation there is to cut corners, uh, whether it's in recruiting, uh, to try to keep players eligible once they're in school with uh, maybe not legitimate courses. Uh, there are just a lot of areas that I think uh, most people really want to stay away from. Some NCAA members saying tying money to winning may be the wrong message. I think the membership and the public have um, some concerns about the pressures that uh, that produces on coaches and student athletes and perhaps the messages that we're sending when we're saying that uh, winning will provide um, you know anywhere from a quarter million to a half million dollar per round there's a growing feeling that the money should go to the schools that run their programs the right way based the distri distribution percentages on the graduation weights of the school number one and two, on where the schools have been as far as their compliance uh, record, uh, how they run a, a program with integrity. And what about schools like the University of Maine that rarely make the basketball tournament yet still need money for their various programs? Athletic Director Kevin White feels it's a disparity that needs to be changed. Well, I think it's important for us to, to use some of those dollars to maybe close the disparity. Another issue is whether players should share in the wealth. There's little support for paying scholarship athletes, but some favor a stipend for expenses. A lot of the players go to the universities and they have no money at all, so if they could receive a small amount of money each month, it would certainly help. The whole issue of TV money will soon be studied by an NCAA committee. One billion dollars is at stake, along with the future of college basketball. And as halftime continues from the Thomas and Mack Center, we'll be talking with Steve Fisher, P.J. Carlissimo, also that ABC News update when we return. ABC's College Basketball Halftime Report has been brought to you by L.A. Gear, unstoppable in performance fashion footwear. Unstoppable. Mmm, what's that fragrance you're wearing? quite like RCA, with features so advanced, you can watch TV in ways you never thought possible, with viewing and listening experiences that are quite overwhelming. Got it! After all, if we didn't push technology to new heights, we'd never be able to face the world's toughest critics day after day. RCA, number one with the toughest critics in the world. Have you ever wondered what a baggage handler might take on vacation? Well, everyone should take Samsonite's Glutton for Punishment. A real good love. On BASF videotape, Always Christmas will last all year round. BASF, tape that lasts forever. 
Everyone's watching ABC Sports on Christmas Day. First, a holiday tradition. Top colored seniors team up for the Kelly Tire Blue Gray All Star Football Classic. <laughs> then it's off to the islands as Michigan State and award winning linebacker Percy Snow tackle Hawaii in the Eagle Aloha Bowl. <laughs> and later, it's the season finale of ABC's Monday Night Football. Boomer Esiason and the Cincinnati Bengals pay a holiday visit to Herschel Walker and the Minnesota Vikings. Three special presents ready to be opened Christmas Day on ABC Sports. Back at halftime in Las Vegas, Iowa turned it over 22 times. The Nevada Las Vegas leads it 47 to 29. Let's take this opportunity right now to send you to ABC News in Washington. An update on the Romanian and Panama situations. Here's Carol Simpson. Thank you, Roger. In Romania, pro-democracy advocates who yesterday toppled the government of Nicolae Ceausescu today announced they have captured the former leader and his family. The proclamation came today on Romanian TV but followed more than 24 hours of conflicting reports of Ceausescu's arrest or escape. It is evening there now and the streets of Bucharest have been the site of bloody gun battles between members of Ceausescu's secret police and demonstrators. Some reports out of Bucharest say as many as 5,000 people may have died in overnight fighting. A fierce battle took place at the headquarters of Romanian television, but pro-democracy demonstrators appear to have repelled an assault by the secret police. In Moscow, Soviet leader Gorbachev told the People's Congress today that he has called leaders of the Warsaw Pact, urging them to support the new regime in Romania. He indicated Moscow would be sending at least medical assistance to the Romanian people. And today's other big story, Panama. Fighting continues between U.S. troops and members of deposed leader Manuel Noriega's Dignity Battalions. The U.S. Army said today the streets of Panama City are now open, although looting continues of downtown businesses. The U.S. is sending some 2,000 new troops and supplies. Meanwhile, the search for Noriega continues with no new reports on his whereabouts. We'll have reports throughout the afternoon as events warrant and a complete report later on World News Saturday. Now back to the game and Roger Twibel. Thank you very much, Carol, and we'll be checking back with ABC News on the latest developments in Romania and Panama between games here of the Duel in the Desert. Joining me right now, the two coaches whose teams were involved in the national championship game a year ago. And, of course, that's Steve Fisher to my far right of the University of Michigan, P.J. Carlissimo of Seton Hall. And Steve, first of all, let me ask you, uh, was it a little bit overwhelming this past spring and through the summer? And were you anxious to get this season started? We were, but maybe not in the fashion that we did with the Arizona loss. But uh, we got a baptism in a hurry, and uh, we're excited to be here and happy to be playing P.J. in Seton Hall. P.J., uh, Steve returns uh, five of his top six players. You lost five starters. It's a different situation for you. Well, we've got some young people, Roger, clearly, but we played a lot of people last year. We're confident that the three returning kids can help us, and we've got some good freshmen and a junior college transfer that kind of throw them in the deep water and find out how good they are. Steve, this is uh, really your first chance to be a head coach through preseason practice early in a season. I mean, you came in with uh, six games left. Uh, how, how have you felt during the preseason, and, and uh, what sort of strategy have you devised for this year? Roger, I've told a lot of people that uh, I, I've been coaching for 23 years, so the coaching part is where I feel most comfortable. Right. This is where I still feel a little uncomfortable. I'm not used to being here with you on ABC. Well, uh, with that team you've got, get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> PJ, let me ask you, we had a piece on about the billion dollars uh, that the NCAA is going to get. How they'll spend that money. Your thoughts on that? Well, to be honest with you, Roger, I think that's something that the athletic directors and the people in the NCAA need to sort out the presidents. I think a lot of people are talking about giving it to the players and I'm not in favor of that. I, I think the players are getting taken care of decently. If we could do a little something for them in the way of trips, but I think the money needs to go to the schools, maybe spread it around a little bit more. Steve, what about yourself on that thought? You know, I, I somewhat agree, but uh, back when we were playing, they did give what they call laundry money, which was about 30 bucks a way month. back in the, right, 30, uh, 30 bucks a month yeah, back right. in the 60s, so that's probably 150 uh, now. You could do your laundry, you could go out on a date, and a lot of things for 30 bucks, but Absolutely. you can't do it these days. Well, there's a lot of big decisions to be made. It's a good situation to be in for the NCAA, but also some very hard decisions are going to have to be made for the future. No question. I mean, when you're talking that much money, it's going to be important what they do, and I think the schools will make the right decision. Gentlemen, best of luck. Nice to see you. Congratulations on a great year last year, and we'll look forward to the second game here in the Duel of the Desert between you two. Thanks, Thanks. Roger. Thanks, okay, Roger. that's coming up next, of course. We're getting ready, though, for the second half of Iowa and UNLV. The Rebs lead it 47-29, and we'll be back with the second half for the Thomas and Mack Center after a word 
from our ABC stations. Do you hear the thunder, thunder, thunder? The call of the road. Moving quick and with purpose. That's the whole idea behind Pontiac's newest Grand Prix. Get on your Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! Introducing the first Grand Prix ever with four doors. The new Grand Prix Sports Sedan. Now get 4.8% financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's all-out excitement closeout. Today, more people than ever are getting a kick out of this hot shot. Interstate batteries hit the road fast with all the cranking power and reserve energy you need for even the worst curves in the weather. And Interstate has twice as many dealers than any other battery company in America, so you're never left stranded. For an Interstate battery dealer near you, all you got to do is call one and crank it. Get the power back on and on and on, yeah. <laughs> The best relief from this hectic season is a jingle away. Ring in the holiday in 30 minutes or less. Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. In the U.S. Armed Forces, you're in with quality people and quality experiences. Opportunity is waiting for you, for you. In the U.S. Armed Forces, you're in. Sunday, it's the attack of the blind date. I want popcorn. Life goes on. Then, if you've never heard of the Christmas witch... See this lamp? I'll turn it on. You just haven't met Winnie. <laughs> Free spirit. Then... We're psychotic. No, I'm not. I'm employed. It's Dustin Hoffman, Jessica Lang, and Bill Murray. It is just for the money. It's not just so you can wear these little outfits. I've never wanted a woman this much. In the Academy Award winning Tootsie, Sunday. It has every advantage of your old yellow pages, yet the new GTE Everything Pages lets you place ads at about half the cost. I'll save money. Yes. Never even had a piggy bank. <laughs> <clears throat> I saved once. About as much fun as a tetanus shot. <laughs> Sir, you have a good product. Just raise your rates. <laughs> Businesses that want to save money advertise in the new GTE Everything pages. Those that don't, don't. Last holiday season, you may have given one of these. Or one of these. Or one of these. This holiday season, the state-of-the-art gift to give is one of these. A compact microtac phone from Cellular One. Buy one now and get a car phone free. Cellular One. Teamed with AT&T's high-quality long-distance service. Help local families in need. Bring your food donations to Meadows Mall this Saturday. ABC's College Basketball. Brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. And by IBM. Whatever your size, whatever your needs, IBM is working to bring you the best solution. After Iowa led 5 to nothing early, UNLV really got it together. An 18-point lead at halftime. And Dick, let's go back, reconstruct the strategy. Let's see what's going what way. It doesn't look to me like Iowa got what they wanted to accomplish. Well, you talk about Iowa. They really had to attack that pressure defense. They didn't. They turned the ball over 24 times against the pressure. So they absolutely really had a nightmare there. And when you turned it over 24 times, and they didn't go to the foul line. They were averaging 30 trips to the foul line a game in their first seven games. So a big no for Iowa. On the other side, you look at UNLV, execute versus the zone. One of the keys in breaking a zone is beat the zone before it is set up. Beat it in transition. Answer, yes. Score versus the press, yes. So UNLV certainly has dominated. The first half goes down to UNLV in big-time style. One other stat we might point out is UNLV's really been going to the free-throw line. They had seven more free-throws than did Iowa. That's not been the case all year long as Iowa came in here with 100 more free-throws than their opponent. 47-29.
checking Iowa. It's the same five that opened the game, and the same story for the running Rebels as Anthony picks up the foul. Garner was scoreless in that first half of play as he had three fouls and had to sit down quite a bit. Also, Ingram did not score. Well, you know it's really unbelievable that UNLV has such a lead, and they really didn't shoot the ball well. Shot 41% in the first half, and they didn't get great guard play at all out of Anthony or Hunt, and yet they still dominated with their defense. There's Ingram trying to come back. That's going to be an intentional foul, two-shot foul. As Ingram tried to almost tackle Johnson when he swiped the ball, so it'll be two free throws coming. The crossed hands by Steve Gordon indicate an intentional foul. Not only is it two free throws, you get possession of the basketball. So Johnson will go to the line. In the first half, Johnson had five rebounds, ten points. He was three of four from the field and four of four from the free throw line. This is a complete package you're looking at right now. 6'7", 250, great touch, plays hard to both ends of the floor. Great personality, he has a tremendous attitude. He's got the full, full package. Well, what was it that Tarkanian told me? He was even better than I thought he was going to be. Unbelievable. Gene Cady just rants and raves about him in a positive way. He coached him in the World University Games in West Germany, where he led the United States to the gold medal over the Soviet Union team. He was coached by Gene Cady and Jimmy Beheim assisted him. Anderson Hutt, who was very cold in that first half, was one of five, kicked it back out to Anthony. See how it's wide open? They're going to let him shoot the wing shot. You watch right here. Little spin move, and Ingram's picked up another foul. Rick Anthony was wide open on that wing. Here you go, Frankie. Michael Ingram, who played uh, first in Missouri, went to Moberly Junior College, and last year was out for the season with a severe knee injury, and he's had to change his game due to that knee. Well, when he played at Moberly, he played with a guy by the name of Mitch Richmond, who did a sensational job last year for Don Nelson in the Golden State Warriors, and Nelly is in a crowd today evaluating and scrutinizing some of these players. Also, Jerry West is here today as Butler gets the ball to go in. Fair jump shooter in his time. Yeah, not bad. Nine points in the first half for Butler. He had also four rebounds. Only shooting two of eight from the field. But a lot of those misses came early. He was trying to do too much. Gary, his presence on the floor just gave this team such an emotional lift. Thompson, in that first half, had 11 points, but he only shot the ball seven times. He needs a little help from his friends. He's really, I thought he played well in that first half, but he needs some help. Nice pass from Garner. They distribute it off to Gibson. Gibson takes it home strong, and those all the NBA scouts are looking at him. There he is running the baseline in their pressure. I'll tell you one thing, they will not take that press off. The Gibson that time coming from the backside, able to deflect the ball. The turnover now giving the ball back to the Hawkeyes. Here is Moses wheeling inside. If that uh, goes, he would have had it, but it did not, and the foul will go against UNLV. When you talk about gut check and you talk about some heart, obviously the players at Iowa have it because they did come back from that big, big deficit on the road against Iowa State in a place where it's not easy to win. And they did it with their defense. They did it with that pressing defense. That foul going on Stacy Ogman, which is his first. James Moses and Moses from the line shooting 75%. Much improved over a year ago when he shot only 58%. He was highly acclaimed out of high school when he came out of the California area. Everybody said a dynamite shooter. He had a career-high 21 in that upset against North Carolina. Field attempt, and who's that going to be off of? Tom Davis says it's Iowa's ball, but it's not. It'll be UNLV. You and I are going to battle about that, using that word upset. You and I always get into that. <laughs> it was at Iowa, and you talk about North Carolina. They just came off. I lost to Georgetown. They had lost four times. I don't call that a big upset. And they lost their luggage to boot. Didn't get their uniforms. Couldn't work out. Uh -oh. Here is Johnson and a blocking foul on Ingram. And Ingram has picked up three fouls in a hurry. He got his uniform. I'll tell you one thing. Number four has got his uniform on. He really doesn't take bad shots either, Larry Johnson. He's really so unselfish. He plays within the team framework. He's got a great personality. The smile. Oh, would I like to represent him? <laughs> <laughs> I might be in your league. <laughs> I'd like to here. represent hey, him. Hey, Mike, get out of here. Come on. I saw you handling that uh, last out night out in here. Vegas. That's his first miss from the line. He's now 6-7. Garner went inside. They didn't stop him. Oh, That's Garner's expertise, quickness, and transition. 52-34 in favor of the running Rebels. He came in here 4-2 and two and ranked 14th in the country. DJ right there! Lost to Oklahoma and lost to Kansas. Well, the big eight tough this year. There's a push off inside. Larry Johnson pushing off the position for the ball. 
Very about tough. that Big 8 conference? Well, the Big 8 really is tough. You look at Oklahoma, for example, they lose the likes of Stacey King and beat, they lose the guard, Mookie Blaylock, and yet Billy Tubbs has put together an unbelievable cast that's really, really dangerous. Talk about Missouri. They lost a tough one to Illinois, but they're very good, and certainly Kansas has been brilliant. And Oklahoma State's got to be a good team. But they learn how to win away from home. Here's Gibson, and hey, Gibson, Gibson now doing a much better job. He's a much better player this year. There's no question about it. He's in double figures with 10. These kids came out really fired up. Well, they don't want to be embarrassed here in this duel in the desert, and they had the marking to that at halftime. Again, Anderson is very tentative to shoot the ball. I think that wrap on his hand is really affecting him. He's one of five from the field. Johnson will put one up. That's a three-pointer. That's amazing. When you have a player of that kind of stature, that size, that unbelievable inside ability, and he can shoot the perimeter shot as well. And the break. Uh -oh. He puts an exclamation point every time he slammed Jan Bam for 19 points. He came in here with an average of 24 a game. And a very quiet 19. You know, you haven't seen him really shooting a whole lot. Makes his shots count. That's off of Iowa. Gibson in disbelief. It'll be UNLV's ball. UNLV lives so much off the spurt. So much off that unbelievable quickness where they can run the ball up the court quickly and get some easy baskets. Garner will come out of the game now, and coming in is going to be Troy Skinner. What you do here is you trade off speed, and you bring in poise. We're going to take a break. A little spur here by the Rebels, and they lead it 57-36. Tidal wave hits Oklahoma classroom. Sophomores climb Mount Everest. This is the highest mountain peak in the world. IBM is helping teachers teach and bring subjects to life with courseware developed with teachers for teachers. Courseware that complements a teacher's curriculum from kindergarten through high school. Five-year-old writes life story. Now available in paperback. Oh, I love this. This is great. A life with pictures. The headache feels like a rubber band going around my head. I have pain. I hurt. Today, Darnell Moore is trying extra strength Tylenol gel caps. For pain like his, why take aspirin or ibuprofen when nothing works better than Tylenol gel caps? No throb, no headache, and definitely no rubber band. I'm going to go with the gel caps. Gel caps work. Tylenol gel caps, only from Tylenol. For everyday pain, nothing works better. And for your cold this winter, now try Tylenol cold medication. You hear the thunder, the call of the road. Don't have to wonder, you gotta go. It's a driving experience like no other. Pontiac Grand Prix. Get on your Pontiac and ride. Pontiac ride. Once you experience the 1990 Grand Prix, your approach to driving will never be the same. Rebuilding fight, man. Now get 4.8% financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's All Out Excitement Closeout. It's Christmas cheer, Viking style as Minnesota hosts the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, my rowdy friends are here on Monday night. The season finale, Christmas night. 57-36. What tradition Iowa has. As you go back through the years, this guy was quite a player for the Hawkeyes, Don Nelson. He played from 60 to 62. He's here today, and he's with Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Gary. And Don, right now, your alma mater is having a tough time against UNLV. Yeah, I came here to root my Hawkeyes on, but uh, I think Tarkanian had a little surprise for him. It's called man-to-man -man defense. All right, Don, what are some of the players that you like in this doubleheader? Well, I came to see all the seniors, but I can't take my eyes off of Larry Johnson. He's going to be a great, great professional someday. What makes him such a talented athlete? Well, you know, I see him shoot from the outside for the first time, but he's just a dominant force out there, whether it's defensively passing the ball or, or uh, just a team player all the way through. Right now, the Golden State Warriors are playing very well. Yeah, we've won six in a row, and we're really proud the way our ball club has come around. All righty, well, congratulations, Don. Enjoy the game. Let's go back to you, Gary. Thank you, Cheryl. Don from the Quad Cities went to the University of Iowa. I'll tell you one thing. He knows how to evaluate players, too. He really does a solid job. One of the premier coaches in the game. Well, you're away after he scored, and now UNLV tried to convert this break. And Butler does it. Skinner tried to draw the charge, but Butler, I don't even think Dewey was there. 61-38. 
Boy, this duel is about over as far as Iowa is concerned. Ouch. That defensive pressure has been relentless. Iowa came in here unbeaten, 7-0. They moved into the top 20, ranked 16. Drive inside, body fly. Moses has been fouled. A blocking foul will go inside. Good baseline drive by Moses. Takes the ball up strong. Protects the basketball. Well, you think about what Iowa lost in Roy Marble, B.J. Armstrong, and Ed Horton. Marble, the all-time leading scorer. Armstrong, the all-time assist guy. And then Horton was an outstanding rebounder. They were quite a trio. Well, how good are they? All three are in the NBA. And anytime you have three players that can make an NBA roster, you know you had some talent. They did lose some good players. That whittles the lead down to 20. On the three-point play is Anderson Hunts. Ogman going up for the rebound and Ingram will be called for the foul and Ingram has had a tough second half he just seems to be picking up fouls as quick as you can and he's going to come out of the ball game as luck and bill will come in you know Gary you mentioned them losing those three players I can equate it back to the year when Gene Cady lost the big three when he lost Troy Lewis Everett Stevens and he lost Mitchell and then he had their first losing season under under Gene Cady and the same when you look at Iowa right now it's amazing he's seven and all doing a great job because it's tough replacing those kind of players. Boy, if Butler can stick that shot, that will really make this a tougher team. Well, he can. He really can. He's got good touch, and he's excellent around the basket with his quickness. 63-41 now in favor of the Rebels. They, they really like playing defense. Look at him D it oh, up. I know it. They Push are tenacious, the aren't they? Here comes Johnson. Uh-oh, four on one. Hit the trail, man. Hit the trail, man. Oh, Johnson didn't want to take it. Anthony's trying to set him up. And I've been missed it. And after all of that, they didn't get a good shot. And if I were Jerry Tarkanian, I would be very upset. Four on one, and you come up with zero poor execution. Skinner penetrates to Gibson, and Gibson doesn't get the roll. A little intimidated by Butler. The battle inside, and Luckenbill comes out of there with it. So you don't want your players to be a little casual. They play with the lead because they can develop a lot of bad habits. Butler committed the foul. Butler really playing with emotion. You can imagine how frustrated he was not able to play in the fall semester due to academics. He had to make up 19 credits. He was only able to practice with the team about 40% of the time as he was being tutored as well as going to class. But boy, number zero, double zero, glad to be there. Well, he was excited in the lobby this morning at the hotel. We were coming over here. We ran into him, and he was excited, carrying his bag. I can't wait to play. Sianovich will come in now. Larry Johnson will catch a breather. Also, Anthony coming out of the ballgame. So, Hunt and Sianovich in the backcourt. There's a guy that does a great job. Timmy Gergerich, what an outstanding assistant coach. He's turned down a number of opportunities. He had a chance to be the coach at Duquesne, had a chance to be the coach at San Diego State. He's had a chance a number of places, but he loves it here in Vegas. Jay Webb not able to get the first one. He was 2 of 2 from the free throw line coming into this game out of Archbishop Mitty High School in San Jose. I salute his mom, Mrs. Webb. She put together a manual, 60 pages, about recruiting for any parent that would like a copy. She has it available. 63-42, the Rebels. Next to come will be Seton Hall in Michigan. That's a walk there's by a traveling call. Butler pointing to his foot saying, I had it planted, but uh, that doesn't impress the officials at all. The turnover gave me the ball to Iowa. Look at Jerry. He says, no, you didn't have it planted. You did a little dance. <laughs> little disco. Boy, he was resplendent last night. Tart showing up in a tux. He was really something. He had that tuxedo on. Can you address the kill? And it goes down to Ingram, and Ingram, that'll end some of that frustration. All those fouls he's been committing. Sianovich, off to Ogman. Oh, missed it. Looking Bill there with the board. That was an outstanding first step to the basket by Stacy Ogman. Explosive first step. And Garner out of control. See, that's his dilemma. That's his problem. He plays out of control. And that's why he loses a lot of minutes on the floor. He has to learn to play within himself. You know, in the last four games, he only committed one turnover. But today, it's been a different story. Seton Hall and me, Shakin. They got the best fourth option in America, Loy Vaught. Up to Ogman, and oh, oh. foul by Garner. The basket will count. Stacy okay, but he hit hard. I think Garner that time a little upset as he uh, went after him and committed his fourth foul. Excellent pass. They got their running game. Hunt throws it across the lane. And there's Gardner coming over defensively. It was a baseball pass that initiated it. 
There's the baseball pass. There's the great catch. And there's the pass across the lane to Augman. Augman's athletic ability gets banged on the arm. Certainly didn't intentionally try to hurt him. It's going up for the basketball. So Augman gets the three-point play. Coming into the ball game now is going to be very young. And Augman will sit down. I'll tell you, Gary, when you evaluate the top front courts in America, and you certainly look at Syracuse when you talk about Ellis and Owens, and you talk about Mr. Coleman, but you take a look at Michigan with their great group of Higgins, Mott, and Mills, I still think the best in the nation is right here today. Butler, Johnson, and Paul. Sianovich committing the foul on the missed shot by Thompson. The one thing about that front line is the great work ethic they have. They really want to work this UNLV team. They got a great chance, and they know it as they look at the field out there. They know they'd like another shot with Kansas, because Kansas tore them apart in that game over at Madison Square Garden. And I know you and Roger Tweibel, Kansas graduates, and you don't let me forget about it, but you're on top of the world. 66-44. Here's Moses ducking in, and Webb follows. Good effort, and now Webb backing around accidentally hit Young in the face. He did not mean to do that and uh, both guys under control tonight three hours of christmas cheer first john denver will join julie andrews in the emmy winning holiday classic the sound of christmas one of my and favorite actresses julie oh, andrews you like all of oh she brings emotion to me and then dudley moore and john lithrow a star in the christmas fantasy santa claus the movie celebrate tonight eight o'clock seven central on abc we asked tartanian who's santa claus at last does he shoot the jump shot I mean, he's amazing. <laughs> when they had the Roe Wade case, somebody mentioned the Roe Wade case. He said, I thought Matt Roe should have stayed at uh, Syracuse and not go to Maryland. The guy's oblivious to anything in the world, <laughs> oblivious except for basketball. Well, he got an early Christmas present from Santa Claus when Butler and Scurry came back today. Here is, coming back into the game, Travis Spice, who shot so well from outside in the first half. At the line is Webb. He has seven points and five rebounds. He's really made his presence known. He's showing Tom Davis that he's able to play against the big people. These are the heavyweights. When you play against UNLV, that's the kind of teams they'll play when they play Michigan and Illinois and Indiana. Throw a new backcourt now for UNLV. As Weiss and Skjanovic, very young, also in there. Inside is Scurry along with Johnson. Weiss helped them in that first half when they had that drought. He came in in two three-pointers. Skip pass against the zone. Young is a very good outside shooter. So they have a couple of guys outside who can nail them. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, they had it set up for him. Weiss couldn't find the handle. Again, it's going to be Barry Young and Thompson with the rebound. Thompson gets it out to Moses. Moses doesn't take the ball with him, and Vice has it for a moment. And it's going to be the running level basketball. Very sloppy basketball right there. Ray Thompson, you are special. Look at this. Welcome to Parks Shark Tank. This is someplace, isn't it? It's intimidating. It really is. Well, they're 88 and 6 here in the seven years that they played at the Thomas and Max Center. 2-0 this year. They all lost only one game here last season. Jerry Tarkanian is probably the only coach in America that I know that has won with the pressure defense and the running game as well as with the zone defense and the patient offense. He did that at Long Beach State and he had the running game and naturally the pressure game right here at UNLV. He's made the adjustment to personnel. Nice from outside. He does that. He's going to get a lot more playing time. He has 11 points. Only one starter on the floor right now for UNLV. That's Larry Johnson. Look at Bill. Wade Lookinville, who was Mr. Basketball in Iowa out of Fort Dodge, and Sianovich lost it. Thompson comes up. Thompson trying to create inside, and he's fouled. Lookinville's a real aggressive player. He doesn't excel in any specific area, but he really works hard. Hey, there's Steve Fisher. Look at him with his gang, getting ready. Terry Mills, an improved Terry Mills. Terry Mills, Loy Vott. I tell you, they've got some talent. Romeo Robinson and four starters back for that championship team. Last team to repeat was John Wooden's team, UCLA. He had a few players. I'll tell you one thing, this guy here's got a great chance to repeat when we talk about Steve Fisher's club. He's got four NBA players. And Mills, Higgins, Romeo, Robinson, and certainly Aloy Vaught. That last foul was on Vice. Thompson at the line. Thompson, uh, who's been averaging 21 a game, has been having a tough time getting any points in this game. Matt Bullard's going to really help this club. He averaged 29 points in their first two exhibition games. 
Oh, that's an easy layup. Nobody stopped the progress of the ball and let him take the ball right to the goal, Greg Anthony. Greg Anthony all the way down the middle. He has six points, 13 points for Thompson. There's Garner ducking in, and he traveled with it. He really doesn't know how to utilize that speed. And there is P.J. Carlissimo. He's going to get him a nice Nuxima commercial like Joe Namath had and get that beard shaved off. Oh, no. That's part of his uh, whole uh, persona. You can't do that. It would not look right. Here is uh, Thompson missing. Looking, Bill tries to take it up, but he's fouled. So Look Iowa continue to play hard, even though they trail this game 71-51. The one thing about Tom Davidson's team, they'll stay with the press, and they'll stay with that zone. They're not going to take it off, and they're going to run with the basketball. He's been utilizing that style throughout his career, and he's not going to change because he's visiting Vegas. I tell you, Iowa will be glad to get Matt Bullard back, who hurt his knee. They hope to have him back by the start of the Big Ten season when they open against Ohio State. He made that team we talked about that Larry Johnson played with, the World University Games team, and he played on that team, and they say he was really playing well until he had that knee, knee injury back in the latter part of November, and they expect, as you said, to get him back for the Big Ten. Look at Bill at the line, able to hit them both. He's their best free throw shooter, shooting 89 percent coming into the game. Yeah, he has nice rotation, nice follow-through, good concentration. 71-53, the running Rebels here in this duel in the desert, and they have been dominating. The one thing I want to say about Greg Anthony, he has really tried to be a point guard, Gary. You can see how he's really negated his offensive penetration ability for passing the basketball and not really trying to think shot first. Foul on Young. That may be the one weak spot is whether they can get the point guard play they need. Well, they've really convinced him in looking at him that he's thinking pass rather than shot. Something that he didn't do last year. Talking about Greg Anthony. Anthony has 51 assists coming into this game and only 22 turnovers. So his ratio is good, but it's awfully hard to take a score and make him a point guard. Oh, it's a tough adjustment for a player. You don't want to really restrict him offensively, yet you'd want him to try and get everybody else involved in the offense. These clubs had a big matchup in 1987. 84-81, UNLV wins. They go to the Final Four. They get beat by Indiana. And the Hoosiers win the National Championship that year. But that was quite a matchup down there for the West Final out in Seattle. Tarks had two teams in the Final Four. One in 87, as you just mentioned. And then Iowa beat the UNLV in 88. 104 to 86. They beat them out in the West in L.A. And if people think I remember that, you're wrong. We got statisticians <laughs> providing us that. <laughs> Here it bites again. Oh, yeah. They love him when he touches the ball. They know he can shoot the rock. Boy, he looks good, doesn't he? Well, he's got that. Every time he shoots it, you look at it, it looks like it has a chance to yep. go in. Picture perfect. 74-54 the count. Iowa going to lose their first game of the year as Thompson had to work for everything blocked that time. By Scurry, Moses Scurry. Look, look, Bice wants it, Bice wants it, he wants it, he wants it, he wants it, oh! Barry Young will load it up. Will not be denied. Wow. I don't know if there's anybody better than UNLV. I'd like to say it right now. They are something special. Well, with their full cast, they're going to be really tough for people to beat. Losing too early, but they may not lose any for a long time this season. They got some tough dates, especially out of the conference. Well, they will walk through the Big West, which they have done every year. And there again is the five-second count. And we're going to take a break with 10.39 left. This crowd very appreciative of the running Rebels. You can go through them. Or you can go over them. Armed Forces to get high-tech training could be the best move of your life.
In the spirit of the holiday season, this year the Miller Brewing Company will be making a donation to United Cerebral Palsy every time you buy Miller High Life, Miller Light, or Miller Genuine Draft. From all of us at Miller, happy holidays. People that have fun what they're doing, Jared. Oh, he's man. having fun at what he's doing, and it becomes contagious. That's what he is. That's Moses exactly Curry. what they say about Moses Curry. He has a contagious attitude, and there was a good example. His brother played in the NBA, and his brother's now playing Harry in uh, Greece. UNLV now will come back with uh, Scurry, Young, uh, along with uh, Johnson, Anthony, and Bice. That's the five now for Tark the Shark, with 10.36 left in the game. They're going to get a lot of layups against the pressure. 2-1-2 two, two set, look opposite, dump it to the box. There's Scurry backing in, but he traveled it. Iowa has Rodell Davis in the ballgame now. Brick Tubbs is also in. Rodell Davis has had some knee surgery. So Skinner, who did not start today after starting all the other games due to that injury, now playing the point guard for this Iowa team. Nothing flashy by UNLV. You know they're going to play straight, head-to-head, -head, tough, tenacious, man-to-man -man defense. Boy, they challenge every passing lane. And nothing, no gimmicks defensively. There's Moses, tough shot. Vice plays good defense that time, and Young comes down to the rebound. Weiss isn't very strong. They want him to gain some weight, but he's got the touch. He has 14 points in the game. You know who his high school teammate was? No. Played for UCLA. Plays there now. Mr. McClain. There's Scurry. Boy, he's enjoying himself. He really enjoys himself while he's on the floor. He really does. Yeah, they were recruiting McLean. They thought they had a shot for him. And in the process, they ended up getting Mr. Bice. Bice went for the steal. Nice change by Moses, but it won't go for him. Here comes Mr. Johnson. But Bice wants to put it up. You can tell he has the feel. Young and Steadwell. Tough tries to rebound, and Johnson's like a man playing with boys in there, isn't it? Boy, did he come away with that effectively. So strong. I call him Sir Miss Lowry, or whatever he wants to be called. Rebound by Ingram. Nine minutes to go in the game. Moses is going to be fouled. Hey, Dick, let me ask you something. At halftime, we had that feature on the $1 billion contract, the extra money going to schools. What do you think they should do with it? Oh, like last night, we had that little debate, and I just definitely feel that a kid deserves some pride money. He deserves $150 per month. I agree with Steve Fisher. they got to have some spend money. they got to be able to dress and feel like somebody that's special. Remember, the game is dominated, Gary, by the kid from the inner city, and those athletes deserve some spend money. The Pell Grant, some people throw up the Pell Grant, but remember this, the Pell Grant, the athletes, in most cases, don't get the full allotment. So I say, with all the money that's available, at least give a kid $150 per month, plus one round trip ticket as part of his scholarship package. All right. Now, you and PJ didn't agree last night on all that. <laughs> But you never let that bother you, Dick. Oh, we had a lot of fun last night. I thought it was really a riot. 78-56 the count. I love giving away those tickets to all those people that were there. Yanovich is back in the game. Ockman also has returned. And in the game now is James Jones. Now, Jones had been the starter at center when Butler was out due to the academic difficulty. He's got to feel a little frustrated, even though I'm sure he's... Really yeah, aware that Butler is certainly his confidence has to be shattered a little bit. Yeah, I think you're, that's a good point. He's from Mount San Antonio Junior oh, College. He's not a rebounder, but he did fill in very well in the estimation of Tarkanian. Well, Butler and Scurry were out of there. Timeout, 8:29 to go. It's all UNLV. It's big. It's now. It's Pontiac's all-out excitement closeout. Now with our longest term 4.8% finance rate ever on Grand Prix. That's right. Now every new Grand Prix is available with long term 4.8% financing. Or get your share of millions in cash back on Grand Prix and almost every other new 1990 Pontiac in stock. But hurry, your Pontiac dealer is closing out the year with big cash back or 4.8% financing on Grand Prix. It won't last long. See your Pontiac excitement dealer now. 
This is ABC. Sir, this is one of the few businesses that doesn't advertise in the GTE Everything pages. Why is that? Well, this is Arnold's rug, not rugs, rug. I only have the one rug, and this is it. But if I advertise in the book people use, they'll be in here looking at my rug. Someone might even buy my rug. There'd no longer be an Arnold's rug. Businesses that want to be successful advertise in the GTE Everything pages. Those that don't, don't. When shaping your business or profession, financial decisions weigh in the balance. You need a banking partner who can carve a path custom-tailored to fit your needs with an individual mix of services, personal attention, and thinking that breaks the mold. Shape your future with the people who've made banking an art, creating uncommon ways to serve you. Continental National Bank. The Uncommon Bank. Watch the Jerry Tartanian Show Sunday afternoons at 1.30. 78.56. As a moment ago, we had Cheryl Miller with Don Nelson. Now, let's go to Jerry West. Thanks a lot, Gary. I'm with the general manager for the Los Angeles Lakers, Jerry West. Jerry, I just finished talking to Don Nelson. He was very excited about Larry Johnson, number four. Are there any players out there that might fit into the Lakers scheme of things? Well, obviously, Larry Johnson is a great player, and he really knows how to play, Cheryl, and I think coaches like players now. But there's a lot of kids out here that have a chance, particularly, you know, since the NBA has expanded 2017. So you really have to be a lot more thorough, I think, in your scouting and also understand that the league needs more young players to keep it going. I know it's really too early to really talk about the draft, but where would you rank this year's senior class? Well, I think it, it, it's a crop. You know, when you look at it, there's certain players out there if you feel you could get would be very, very attractive. But Cheryl, the, the, you know, the, the dollars have changed so much today that all these young kids, that, you know, you hear people that are interested in coming out. Frankly, I don't like to see that. But the dollars are so great for these kids. If they feel they can come out and play, they're going to do it. Hey, thank you very much, Jerry. Enjoy the game. Let's go back to you, Gary. And while you're away, Brian Garner just fouled out of Iowa. Well, you know, thinking about Jerry West, he played at West Virginia, and later this year we'll have the Mountaineers going against Rutgers on a game here on ABC. I'll tell you one thing. He looks like he can go out and get 20 points Ooh. right now. And can you imagine what he would really get today's bar in today's market? He and Oscar oh, Robertson? Are you serious? With the dollars, the average salary is going to be about a million a year? Unbelievable. Garner leaves. You know, Jerry West probably could have made a living playing golf, too. What an outstanding golf. You know the great thing about Jerry West, and I really mean this sincerely, in my travels going out, doing a lot of games over the last 11 years, I really, the one thing I admire about him, he doesn't sit in his office. This guy is out evaluating, scrutinizing, and working in the trenches. He's a worker, and you can see why. And that's why he was a great athlete. He really had great work ethic. This break is due to the fact the 45-second shot clock has malfunctioned, and they were trying to get it all set and back to working order. And so we're going to take a break while they try to get that all remedied. It's 78-56 in favor of UNLV. Another Pontiac First is ready for delivery. The first four-door version of Grand Prix style and performance. The new Grand Prix Sport Sedan. You've got to drive it. Get on your Pontiac! The exciting new four-door Grand Prix. You've got to check it out. Rebuilding Titan Now get 4.8% financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's All Out Excitement Closeout. Make it burn. has a cold and I have a cold. Why am I the only one suffering tonight? Why? She took some her mother always gave her, Vicks NyQuil. I took some my mama always gave me. She's not sniffling, sneezing, coughing. <laughs> Why am I? She's feeling so much better. Maybe I should start listening to her mother. What am I saying? Oh! 
Vix Nightwill, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, so you can rest medicine. All the Bengals want for Christmas is a shot at the playoffs, but the Vikings are out to win their division crown. It's the season finale of ABC's Monday Night Football, Christmas Night. Well, the Dick Vitale fans, they come in all sizes, all shapes, all ages. Uh-oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to mention his name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's this picture he saw, I'm sure, uh -oh. that must have upset that young man. Hey, I tell you what, here's my old Clark team. Since the time Jerry's been coaching here, how would you like this club? Thea Sobers, Sidney Green, Larry Johnson, Armin Gilliam. And I'm forgetting a lot of great players. What about oh, Freddie yeah. Banks, Mark Wade? So you've already put Johnson on that team. Uh, he was on it the first day he played. Hoffman is a guy some people are making case for him, too. By the way, Johnson has 19 points and 8 rebounds in this game. 18 for Hoffman. And he has presence. There's something about presence that superstars possess. The Jerry West, the Oscar Robertson, that make their other people better. And this guy is one of few games. Hey, we time. had a great time with he and the other coaches last night. Uh, having kind of a roast, if you will, of uh, Dick Vitale with the rest of them. All the tough questions <laughs> that were fielded. You guys made it tough on me, but I had a lot of fun with all the fans. It was a good time, and I think all the coaches and players have enjoyed this time out here in Las Vegas. There's a foul, and uh, the fouling uh, Webb, and committing the foul to Zockman, his third. I think it's great that you put together different conferences like this into these kind of situations than some of the games I'm reading about, like Syracuse blowing out post cereal or whatever. What, the CW posts, uh, the Twinkies? I mean, does Bayheim need to win that badly? I mean, I can't believe it. Or the St. Leo's, right? I mean, I could see playing the Cornells and them Division I schools. I might shoot the ball. Oh, so sweet. And oh. the three-pointer, he has 17 for the day. Did our producer shoot like that Kim Belton when he played down at Stanford? You know, I don't remember that. I remember him. I tried to recruit him down at Rutgers, but he didn't have that kind of touch. <laughs> he was tough inside, though. That's called filler material right now. <laughs> We're searching and grasping. Here's Moses on his spin move, and he is fouled. All right, now the decade of the 80s coming to a close, and so we're going to go back and pick the best. Well, I think Ewing was the best player, the best conference in the 80s. I go with the Big Ten. Dickie Paparo, to me, was the best zebra. Five trips to the Final Four. Hank Nichols would be, but he has not repped. Hank is in a class by himself. Well, he's repped a little, but he's now the national coordinator. Jackson, the best freshman. NCAA final was dramatic. NC State winning it. David Gavitt's been the best commissioner. And Jimmy Beheim has been the best recruiter. He's such a great recruiter that his players don't want to play the post colleges. I have nothing against CW Post, but they should be playing Syracuse. I tell you, Dick, I still remember that 83 game. Well, Wittenberg you know put up the shot. Lorenzo Charles followed with a step. The shot hurt around the world. Well, you know what made that so amazing? The fact that they had to win three games in the ACC just to qualify to get into the NCAA tournament. They had to beat a great North Carolina team with Perkins and Jordan. And then they had to beat NC State. In the final, Ralph Sampson's great Virginia team. Here is Thompson, and Thompson can't get it. Sianovich blocking off well, and it's going to be off of Iowa. Could we throw up the worst of the 80s? Worst coaching decision in the 80s? Okay. Worst coaching move of the 80s? It's got to go to Bill Frieda down uh, at Arizona gonna, you're State. You're going to show all your stuff here in the first game. You better save some of this. Well, you know, he, he has to be the worst coaching decision of the 80s, leaving that Michigan team like he did and making a hero out of Steve Fisher, two trips to the White House. I'll tell you what, he's done a good job recruiting this year. Oh, unbelievable. Bill Frieda's done a fantastic job. He's a workaholic. I like to tease him, but the guy's going to get it done at Arizona State. Broken up. It'll be Iowa's ball. 6.54, and this game has been over for a long time. It's been all the running Rebels after they trailed 5 to nothing in the early going. It took almost five minutes before the Rebels could get on the scoreboard. And there is Gibson, and he's pushing off and a foul inside. And uh, people getting a little hot there. Well, you know, the Iowa kids right now, it's a little frustration. You're out here. These guys are pressing full board. They're blowing you away. And he's a competitor. This guy's not going to... Look at him. He's a competitor. That you was Butler with the that. foul, by the way, his fourth. Yeah, Tom Davis has not quit his... Intensity has been there. His team started well, but then all of a sudden that run by UNLV, and they've been playing catch-up ever since. The way I really scrutinize and evaluate looking at Iowa, Gary, I really believe they're going to beat some people that they're not supposed to beat, but then they're going to have some really poor performance as well because of inexperience. They have so many freshmen and sophomores. Wow, Yanovic really hit the deck that time. No damage done as by scores his 18th and 19th points of the game. He's really had a big day, and I'll tell you one thing, his two threes he hit early gave his team a tremendous lift. 
And now Thompson is shaken up. Ray Thompson limping as he tries to retreat to the bench. Now, I don't know what happened. It was away from the ball where he sustained that injury, and that could be a blow for this Iowa team. That would really be a shame because he is by far their most complete player. He's very versatile. He's really got a multi... He's multi-talented. There's his numbers today. He had 11 of those in the first half. When he came out of high school, the big three in the state of Illinois, LaFonso Ellis, Eric Anderson, and Ray Thompson. Eric Anderson, now starring for Indiana, was the player of the year, but Thompson and LaFonso Ellis certainly had great scholastic careers. And, of course, Ellis now at Notre Dame. So Thompson will go in. They want to get immediate attention to the injury. Number 32. We're going to watch Bice now shoot the jumper. He stepped on someone's foot. I don't know. I missed it, Gary. Yeah, that's the way it happens so often. Coming down on the side of someone's foot. Anderson Hunt is back in the game now for UNLV. 6.23 left. In it goes to James Jones. Blocked by Gibson. James is playing without any confidence at all. I've watched him touch the ball twice, and he's really not playing with any authority. You know, oh, you're a human nice. being. You start, and all of a sudden, the day that Mr. Butler is eligible, he's inserted into the starting lineup. He reads all the papers, and it's got to hurt. It's got to hurt within yourself, even though he knows that Butler is a much more polished player. Well, Tark said, I wasted no time. I knew Butler was the best man. That was his call, and he put him in and did not start Jones today. That last foul going on Hunt and Moses at the line. 6-12 left in this game. Again, Michigan, Seton Hall to follow. And Buffalo, who's been struggling, blasting wow. the Jets. Well, they've had some controversy in Buffalo and some nitpicking among the teammates, but it looks like they've got it together today. There's Butler ripping it out of there. That's like Dick Sally, Jane, we got, we got the little books for Jim Kelly and a running back Thomas. You don't think I knew my football. Well, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm looking to be a football analyst. Move over, Keith Jackson. Right? I want to work with Keith in football. He's out in Hawaii while I'm out here in <laughs> Vegas. You, I wanted to go there instead of Montgomery, Alabama, but you know who ends up there? Well, Mr. KJ, <laughs> Mr. Football is up in Hawaii. I'll tell you what, Michigan State is easy over Hawaii. Put that down, take it to the oh, bank. All right. Percy well, Snow is incredible. The defense of Michigan State is something special. George Perlis, 87-60 the count, and it goes to Gibson, and Gibson still playing hard as foul. Well, he knows he's being evaluated also. And I'll tell you one thing, Gary, you look at his game now versus last year where he was not nearly as active as he is today. Well, he's the kind of guy who, I guess he had to catch up with his body. Seven foot, 245 pounder. He and B.J. Armstrong are the best of friends. And B.J. still calls him, even though he's in the NBA with the Chicago Bulls. They talk uh, all the time. As now coming out of the ball game will be Butler and coming in will be Moses Scurry. Roy Marbles down playing with Atlanta with the Hawks and I thought that he was going to get a lot more playing time because Atlanta has a need at the second guard slot but he's trying to make that adjustment from being a small forward and he doesn't have really good perimeter shooting ability but he's an outstanding runner and jumper and he's a good baseline player. So 12 points with his 11 rebounds for Gibson and it's 87-62. And mentioned in Atlanta as we look at the trap right here. I wish they could contract to Mike Fratello. He deserves it. He's been a solid coach down there. Stan Caston right out to check and give him a contract. He had so much stability to that program with the Atlanta Hawks. Where did that come from? Oh, we're looking for filler material. Talking about Ray Mar Roy Marble. Okay. Just check it. Then it comes to Gibson. Gibson gets that ball down again, as you were talking earlier, and they strip it. He's got to keep the ball up. Oh, Scurry. Moses brings it out. Boy, does he play hard. Hey, that's a five-pointer. That was a five-pointer. He shot that from beyond a three-point line. I couldn't believe it. That's from the Grand Canyon area, I think. Woo, he shot that from downtown Vegas. Hey, remember all you people, Michigan and Seton Hall. Remember last year, three seconds to go as we take a look at Bice. Take a look at this three-pointer. Hunt kicks him back. Oh, no, no, we're showing the transition play. There's the transition play. Scurry. Misses the layup. Now they throw it back out. Now take a look at Bice. Look at this one. That's 27 feet. Bice with 19 points. He's hit five of nine from three-point range as Iowa at the other end. 87-64. You know, one thing, this game, not only for competition to win, but also for some oh, charities nice that we want to talk about. Inside Lincolnville. I really like the fact that the Iowa kids haven't quit. They've just been outmanned here today by a much more athletic team. 
Anderson Hunt on the drive. And he lost it, and it's going to be Iowa's ball. Anderson Hunt really has not played well today, and maybe it is that bandage on his hand. Yeah, I think it's fine. It was in a cast. His hand was in a cast after the injury at Oklahoma. You know, the charity today for UNLV is for the Nevada School of the Deaf, and Dr. Louise Tart Kenyon is in charge of that. She teaches there at the School of the Deaf. And uh, there's a rejection inside by Jones. He rejects it again. And we're going to have a foul spotted inside. Well, I'm sure they like to see the aggressive play of Jones right there blocking that shot you mentioned dr. Tartanian she's certainly academically oriented as all of Jerry's kids are yeah and then Iowa their charity is the Iowa Library Foundation they took at Jerry's family his son graduated out of law school he has another son that's going to be a doctorate 87 66 Tart the shark well his team is rolling This December, things are really heating up. Heating up at every GM division. Each dealer is out to make December hotter than ever before. Like with Pontiac's all-out excitement closeout with big cash back and GMAC's 90-day deferred payment plan on a wide selection of models. Yes, this December is incredibly hot at every GM division. It's GM's hot December. Come feel the heat. Skydiver Eddie Turner will never forget October 16th. We were jumping at 12,000 feet. Frank collided with another diver and was knocked out cold. Like a missile, Turner shot toward his friend. All I could think about was just getting a hold of that ripcord. Which he did just 10 seconds before impact. Uh, he'd done it for me. Perfect man of Miller. To everyday heroes everywhere, we offer our best. Smooth, never bitter, Miller beer. I told Frank, next time you fall, make sure it's for a tall blonde. <laughs> the official attendance of sellout. Now, the tickets here are not the UNLV season tickets. They had to sell the tickets separately for this duel in the desert. Well, this was put together by a good friend of Jerry's, yours and mine, Mr. Sonny Vaccaro. He put this match up together, and they had to sell all the tickets. As you said, this was not part of the well, season ticket plan. Good job. And they did the job. And this is going to be an annual event, as I understand. Uh, the duel in the desert, part two or second annual, whatever, will be coming up next year. Odell Davis at the line. Here's another one of those guys with a severe knee injury. Iowa's really got a lot of guys with braces and knee problems. They hate to see that. So many kids get so many hours athletically and come down with a serious injury. Foul in the backcourt as a steal attempt on Scurry. Odell Davis picking up the foul. His first. 19 left in this game and UNLV with their new guys back Butler and Scurry have certainly put on a show for us today James Jones gets it in and here comes Bice who's played so well Hunt nice oh, pass nice. Scurry and he's fouled foul going on Moses Moses Scurry doing a little jumping act there but he should have had that easy conversion excellent clinic in attacking the press they've really gone through the press really well Arcanian, the nation's winningest active coach. He's won 534 games. You know, something really bothered me today, and I'll tell you what. You and I had breakfast, and we talked about it. Can I get it off my chest Go right ahead. now? You've done everything really? else. Let's do it. Can I get it off my yes, chest? I'm ready. You and I had breakfast, and we talked about athletics and the college athletic scene. What's wrong with our system is very simple. Pick up Sports Illustrated and read the article by Douglas Looney about the University of Toledo situation where they fired Dan Simmerl, the coach, and he's won. He's been loved by the community. His players graduate. But the athletic director, Mr. Al Bowles, says he hasn't won enough. we got to win more. So he makes a change. I have nothing against the new coach coming in, but I'll tell you what, Mr. Bowl and Mr. Horton, the president, I'll tell you what, you get my award is shame on you. There is no way in the world that Dan Simrel should have been fired from his job because he did not win enough. Read the article by Douglas Looney. It blew my mind. I tell you, it did bother Dick. He's been talking about it for two solid days. Well, that's when, you know, we hear presidents talk about academics, academics, and yet we have a situation there where the athletic director is quoted. I mean, I read those quotes. I couldn't believe it. But he hasn't won enough. The guy had a winning season with five of his last six games. And he's a quality guy. Let's get back to this game now with 4-0-1 as Gibson at the line. You know, Gibson, we mentioned, is from Bowbells, North Dakota. He has a brother, people. by the way. They call him 
big boy, Kendall. He's in the ninth grade. I mean, they're going to have another Whoa. big guy coming along. He's the last recruit of the George Raveling era. George now at the University of Southern Cal brought in many of those kids that played last year in terms of B.J. Armstrong and talking about the Horton. Look at Iowa. They're down by 20, but they're still playing hard. Moses Curry, and he's intercepted by Rodell Davis, and Davis committing the foul. He's trying to get a jam. Gives him a little stare. They get the ball to Scurry. He's trying to get a jam. Davis is not going to be intimidated. Comes rotating over. Makes contact. Davis, the sophomore out of Thornton Township High School in Dixmoor, Illinois, committing the foul. Scurry will go to the line. He has four points. He's two of two from the line. Well, we talked about Larry Johnson. 19 points, eight rebounds, and he's been sitting down a lot as... UNLV coasting to this one, and he came in here with a 24-point average and 11 rebounds a game. You know, last year there were a lot of expectations, as there are this year on the UNLV team, picked number one by a lot of people. There were a lot of expectations last year on the Iowa team. Iowa finished 23 and 10 and 10 and 8 in the conference, and a lot of people thought a fourth-place finish was really a disappointment, considering the fact that they were projected to be really a, a top-five team in America. Dale Reed has come back in for Iowa. He's number three. This is looking, Bill, kind of a utility man, does everything fundamentally sound and gets that one to go. I'll tell you, if you don't lace them up and come to play against Iowa, especially when they get you at home, they're going to make yeah. life a little bit miserable for you. Carver Hawkeye Arena, very tough play. Oh, it's a beautiful place. Moses Scurry that time pushing off, committing the foul on the inbounds. 3.23 left, 90.71. This guy's an entertainer. I'll tell you what, he's an entertainer. He's oh. got charisma. Well, living here, you've got to be an entertainer, don't you? I guess it's really rubbed off on him. And it comes to Reed. Reed averaged 40-some points in high school. Yeah, but he like a bell reach. That's on time by Jones. I'll tell you what, he averaged 40 points a game in high school, but he didn't face this baby. He didn't face this in high school in Wyoming. A man who enjoys his work, Moses Scurry. I mean, these are some unbelievable athletes you're looking at right here. Nice pass by Reed. Excellent pass. That'll count, and the foul will go against Barry Young. They really like Reed. They think he can be a solid point guard. I'll tell you what, anytime you score 40 points, though, Gary, I don't care who you're scoring them against. You're doing something positive. Well, he's the coach's son. His dad coached him in Wyoming. Now, watch this, and you think he doesn't enjoy this? I think our people in the truck love this guy. You know what he reminds me a little bit of? I may be wrong. Correct me. Does he have a little bit of Leon Spinks in him? The way he <laughs> smiles and looks and bounces around. I don't know how he I goes in why. the ring, but he... Or maybe Michael Spinks. Is that the right wrong guy? <laughs> So Bice now leads the ball game. A very appreciative crowd. Oh, they give a standing O. He's getting a standing O. A lot of people thought they just recruited him to try and get Dominic Lane, who stars now for UCLA. But he's showing that he can play, too, Mr. Bice. He's earned that scholarship. Well, he's been a crowd favorite before he became a good player. Now what will happen? Here's the trap on the backcourt. Got to look diagonal. Got to look. gets out of it. Off to Anderson Hunt, and Gibson changed that shot, and look at Moses Curry. We're going to have a technical this time for hanging on. You can only hang on to protect yourself. He was hanging on, a little showbiz right there, and Dickie Paparo bangs him immediately with the big T. I don't think Tart can has frowned very long. He's got to be excited about the enthusiasm of Scurry. There it is, Ralph. I see he holds it the left hand as he tries to jam it. Remember, you can grab it to protect yourself in case of injury. I don't know. Well, he was positioning himself for the slam, yeah, I Yeah, he was. He held it with the first hand, the left, to try and get himself yep. a little extra lift. Almost like we had in the Michigan Duke game, Keith and I went bananas when Lloyd Vaught tried to lift Ramil Robinson up. Of all you people, coming up next, Michigan and Seton Hall. Last year, Ramil Robinson goes to the line. Three seconds on the line. A lot of pressure, huh? Oh, it delivers both. And you know, he had not been that good a free throw shooter all year either. And he's really able to hit the big ones that won it. Well, he had the big ones also against Duke in that great game that we had 113 to 108. Yeah. I thought it was a tremendous college basketball game. So the technicals have been shot by Moses. Makes it 92-75. And Ingram will inbounds. You see the time remaining. I'm excited to see Terry DeHare. I've heard so many great things about the diaper dandy. He played with Bob Hurley in high school at St. Anthony's where they were undefeated. And he stepped in as the leading scorer for Seton Hall in the backcourt. And P.J. Carlissimo goes on and on talking about Terry DeHare. 
Let's go up to Roger Twible as we get ready for that second game between Seton Hall and Michigan. Well, thank you very much, Gary. And between games, of course, we'll be talking to the coaches from these two teams, of course, Iowa and UNLV. We'll also take a look at some scores of other games from around the nation today and, of course, a couple of football games also to tell you about. Uh, I had a chance to speak the other day with former Michigan coach, now head coach at Arizona State University, Bill Frieder. That was before his trip up to Lawrence, Kansas, to play the second-ranked Jayhawks. But Bill had some interesting things to say. We'll also be bringing you a news update from Washington in the situation in Panama and Romania, and uh, Cheryl Miller will also be along with us. So all that coming up between the game here, the duel at the desert as it United, United, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and Iowa finishing up this first game. Gary? All right, we're only five blocks from the Vegas Strip, and there's showbiz always over there, but Dick, there's some showbiz here. It really is. Uh, UNLV has really had a remarkable performance here. They should get an encore. This performance is almost as great as looking at those two big white tigers down at the Mirage. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I never saw the volcano, though. Did you see it erupt? No, I didn't see the volcano erupt. We're working too hard, I guess. Well, Tark was trying to grimace a while ago, upset about what Scurry got the take go, but he hasn't had very much to be upset about today. Well, they really picked it up on a defensive end. I was not impressed in the first half with their offensive execution. Their defense really was the difference. 92-75, two and a half minutes left. Is looking, Bill, being pressured outside by Ogman and hitting the deck as Reed. We're going to have a foul on Stacy Ogman. Dale Reed, he's out of Bags, Wyoming. Mr. Basketball, they were the Class A state champions. He's got excellent range as a shooter. List him at 6'2", as Troy Skinner will come in after Reed shoots the free throws. They got so many turnovers, Iowa. We talked about the turnovers being the key. They got more turnovers than making the apple turnovers down at the local bakery. Here's Reed. thing you have to be impressed about, and I always have something about this, any kid that's a coach's son really plays intelligently. This guy is going to, I'm sure, be in that same category. You always see the coach's sons. No well, matter what sport it's in, they have something through osmosis, if nothing else, that makes them a little special the way they play the game. Like Bobby Hurley, whose dad is the coach over at St. Anthony's. They're not born with a bottle. They're born with a basketball in their crib. 276, 221 left, and Greg Anthony now having some pressure put on. Good looking, Bill. They're still going toe to toe with him. Ogman now just killing some time. Kind of a little delay game right now. The crowd doesn't like it. They it's think they wrong. want him to get 100 points. That's what usually is thought about at this stage. Well, Larry Johnson had mentioned that they wanted to hit the century mark. Trying to force him to one on one. There's a nice button. And he and Ingram kind of staring each other down after that. Now, you don't need some hot dog stuff right now. You don't really want to lose your effectiveness as a team and try to really develop a, a lack of class. You want to play and play the game hard and play it with intensity, but you don't want to humiliate people. Skinner now comes in at the first break as Reed will check out. So Iowa will go down to defeat. They'll be 7-1. UNLV will move to 5-2 and, and reestablish themselves as a contender to win it all. Rejected that time by Butler. Hunt. And Hunt is fouled by Moses. I'm really surprised that Jerry has not substituted. Taking a chance of a potential injury. Guys are a little relaxed right now. There goes Butler jamming it. I could see, I could see playing Butler on the floor because he needs playing time. That, that can get a little hot going right now, running your mouth a little bit to an athlete. That, that was between he and Ingram after the play. Yeah, Butler's come out of the basketball game. At the line is Hunt. Butler leads with 18 points. They must have nailed the technical somewhere. Yeah. Anderson Hunt shooting the tee, and I don't know who the technical was called against. An intentional foul is what they've said. So the intentional foul that time by Moses on the breakaway. You know, they're starting to enforce that a little more. I know you early in the year felt they weren't, but they are starting to do that now. Well, I think the officials have to enforce it, and it's in the rule book. The defense of the officials, it's not their job to, to decide whether or not a player is 
is, is trying to, to, to make the intentional foul. Their job is to basically call what they see. And if a guy's directly playing the ball, it's not an intentional foul. I talked to Hank Nichols about that, the national coordinator of officiating. And to me, one of the greatest, or not the greatest, ever to blow a whistle. There's what's so effective for Iowa. The inbounds pressure from Gibson, but then they turn it over. Derek, if UNLV would play Kansas now, they went back to that NIT, what do you think would happen? Oh, I think UNLV is the better basketball team. I really, well, I, I'll take that back. I think Kansas is the better team in the way they're executing. But I think down the stretch in March, UNLV, when they have all their people, if it's a rematch, I give the edge to UNLV. All right. We'll see if that comes back to haunt you. On a neutral, <laughs> on a neutral court, not up in... Rock Chalk Jayhawk. All right. Okay. Well, you, you reestablished your thought there. By the way, in the game now is Dave Rice, number 30 for UNLV. And there's a foul on Moses reaching in on Anthony, and he's fouled out of the game. I just think that Kansas has played as well as they possibly can play. I think their execution has been greater than any team I've ever witnessed early in the season. They're going to have a player added, too, by the way. Yeah, Jameson, and he could be a good one. He could really be a good one. I watched him practice last year, and he's a good athlete. But I really think when you talk about UNLV, they're going to just get better and better and better. Coming up, Seton Hall, Michigan. We've been setting the stage for that. And in between games, we'll have uh, Jerry Tarkanian visiting with Dick Vitale and this impressive win. As Anthony now makes it 97-76. One minute, one second left in the game. You know, really, Hunt and Anthony have not really been factors in this game. It's been that powerful front line of UNLV. The best in America. Crowd booing a little bit on Jepson. They thought he tried to deliberately throw some elbows. In the game right now is Jeter, Chris Jeter, number 53 in the post for UNLV. He's a tough, hard-nosed player. Jones with the steal. Anthony tries to come out with it. Ingram's got it instead. It is so sloppy right now, yeah. Gary. Jepson, though, continues to hammer away. Timeout, Iowa. They stop it with 37 seconds. Well, you can pull the timeout, yet you can insist that your team go back on the floor, and that's what the doctor's doing, Tom Davis. So they stop the clock, but they don't want to take the full timeout, and so in UNLV will inbound. Gary, the point I wanted to make about the intentional foul and talking to Hank Nichols, it's not the job of the official to read in the mind of a player. He cannot read into the mind of the player. My argument has been that the book says if it's premeditated in the mind of the official, he should call it an intention. They have to clear up the terminology. The fans but, wanting them to shoot a three-pointer and hit the 100-point mark. But to do it is Rice. Rebound by Lookinville. It's not Vice, it's Rice. In the corner, three-point attempt. Not going for Odell Davis. Lookinville, he's, he's tough. He's inside. Boy, he gets rejected there, though. That was Jeter that did it, and Gibson again. That was a great pass by Reed. That was a tremendous pass. And so it's over. Gary Tarkanian, 535 wins in his career. 97 to 80 is the final. And this UNLV team right now ranked 14th, but they're going to be moving up on the polls in a hurry with this victory here today. And what's ahead? They're going to be something special. Iowa, on the other hand, only their second road game of the year now goes to 1-1 one and, one, and for the season, 7-1. and one. As it was a total dismantling today of this Iowa team by an impressive running Rebel team. Let's go to Tom Davis. He's with Cheryl Miller. Coach, it really looked like UNLV's pressure defense really dictated the game. Yeah, they played great. And I, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about Vegas. They're a very, very good ball club. My guys played harder and better in the second half, but the first half got us too far behind. Were you surprised that your team wasn't able to get to the free throw line as effective as they had been in the past? Yeah, I was really shocked by that. But I didn't give the credit to UNLV. They're a good veteran ball club. They do a lot of good things. You have two more games before you get into conference play. Does this type of a game put a damper on the season at all? Well, I hope not. I hope just the opposite, that we learn from it and then we get better from the things that we learned here today. And I and, uh, hope I get some of my injured guys back. We had a couple of injuries there late. I hope that they're okay. Thanks a lot, Coach, and good luck the rest of the season. Let's go back to you, Gary. All right, Cheryl. He's talking about Ray Thompson, who looked like he may have turned an ankle. And, of course, Matt Bullard, he hopes to get back very soon. Tart the Shark with Dick Vitale when we come back in a little bit as the Rebels win it impressively.
ACC's College Basketball has been brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement by Iron Cologne, Pump Some Iron, Iron Cologne, and by L.A. Gear, unstoppable in performance fashion footwear. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. December, unsung American, Mary Gonzalez, helping families learn together. I'm going to try to make sure that they know what it means to be able to read a book. Mary lives and works in East Harlem, but her favorite part of the day is volunteering at her neighborhood literacy center. You see all these kids reading books, doing their homework. The little boy's name was Steven. They get joy out of reading the book, and when I see that joy, it makes me feel wonderful. To volunteer in your community, call this number. Saturday, John Denver and Placido Domingo join Julie Andrews in the Emmy-winning holiday classic. Julie Andrews, the sound of Christmas. Then, tis the season of Santa. Oh, that's fantastic. John Lithgow and Dudley Moore in the motion picture for the entire family, Santa Claus, the movie, Saturday. Season's greetings and happy holidays. From all of us here at 2020. Season's greetings from all of us at ABC News. It has every advantage of your old yellow pages, yet the new GTE Everything Pages lets you place ads at about half the cost. I'll save money? Yes. Never even had a piggy bank. <laughs> <clears throat> I saved once. About as much fun as a tetanus shot. <laughs> Sir, you have a good product. Just raise your rates. <laughs> Businesses that want to save money advertise in the new GTE Everything pages. Those that don't, don't. Hey, where's the food? How about tacos? Yeah, tacos! Yeah, tacos! 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 Taco Bell introduces Tacos to Go. Now get our original tacos in a 10-pack for $5.89. Or a 6-pack for just $3.54. Packed and ready to go. Anywhere you've got a few hungry friends, tacos to go. At this price, it won't take much to keep them quiet. It is now post time. They're off and running at the Barbary Coast and Gold Coast race books with daily doubles, Quinellas, and Exactas at all televised tracks and where we pay up to 500 to 1 odds on the daily triple. For the very best televised horse racing in Las Vegas, it's a dead heat finish. The Barbary Coast and the Gold Coast. Celebrating a festival of light. Happy Hanukkah from Channel 13. And welcome back to the Thomas and Max Center. Nevada, Las Vegas, the winner over Iowa. The Rebs forced Iowa into 36 turnovers. And courtside right now with Dick Vitale is Jerry Tarkanian. Dick. Thanks, thanks a lot, Roger. I'm here with Mr. Las Vegas, Jerry Tarkanian. Jerry, last night you were on cloud nine with the news that David Butler was eligible, and I could see why. Oh, he's a great player. Uh, he just does so much for us. He can rebound. He, what the thing you didn't see today is he can go out and guard a guard out front. He can defend anybody on the court. I really think when you look at your club, Jerry, that you got the best front court in America now, potentially, with Stacey Augman, Larry Johnson, and also Mr. Butler. But the backcourt, to me, still looks a little bit inconsistent. Well, we, we hope to get better there. You know, we're, the one thing that we really miss back there is I'd like to have a 6'5", 6'6", guard who can match up when you play some of these other ball clubs. Our two guards are both 6'1", but I, I like them. I, I, you know, they do a good job for us. I thought you'd like to have maybe your son back running the point or also Mr. Wade. But, you know, the kid Bice gave you a great lift shooting the three-point shot. Uh, Travis is a great shooter. He's a self-made player, and, you know, I'm just so proud of everything he's accomplished. Uh, he was a walk-on who made it uh, and made it big. Hey, quickly be an analyst right now. The next game, and quickly... Who do you like and why, Michigan and Seton Hall? You know, Michigan should win the ball game, but, you know, you can't sell Seton Hall short. I saw what C, uh, P.J. did last year, and, you know, I watched them practice yesterday. I think they do a great job. I think it's going to be a good ball game, but I think Michigan's too strong for them. Well, thanks a lot, Jerry. Go and enjoy your Christmas holidays. Make me Santa Claus will bring you another seven-footer. We're going to go to a real seven-footer, a giant now, a Kansas Jayhawk, Roger Twyvo.
Oh, thank you very much, Dick. And we're getting set for Seton Hall, Michigan. But first, let's go back to Washington, ABC News, and Carol Simpson. From